Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning live broadcast here on Facebook. And today you'll be in the company of myself, Stanley. I'll be ministering in English and also my wife that will be speaking Afrikaans. Goeiemorgen, ek is Karin, loof die heren, baie welkom hier by die dag gemeente, is een zondagochtend by eenkomst hier op Facebook, live wat ons uitsaai, ons eredienst, ons het ook volgend nachtmaal, kry ook jou nachtmaal goedkies gereed, yes, en terwijl ons ook die boodskap so share, share het ook na jou tijdlijn toe, share het na jou status toe, so dat allemaal dit ook kan sien, en jy eerst het baie welkom vir oogend, loof die heren. Amen, good morning, this morning we're going to have communion service as well, um, some might understand it as the Lord's Supper so we're going to have communion this morning first of all um, after our um, opening prayer we usually have communion that's just for lo uh, logistics sake um, so that everybody can partake of the communion life and so we can all uh, partake of the body of Christ so as you are tuning in please share the message there to your timeline so that everybody can hear it. We also share the audio of our ministry afterwards on WhatsApp. Uh, we share it on um, YouTube as well. We've got the same YouTube channel, the online cat, the online church. Now in Afrikaans, it's the online cat. That's the acronym DAK. Uh, it stands for the online church, if you don't understand Afrikaans. Um, we are ministering in South Africa. We are a South African residence. <laughs> our main language is Afrikaans, so our secondary language is English. And we've got a lot of people in our, in our ministry, in the country, worldwide, that understand that are South Africans, that understand uh, both Afrikaans and English. And some of them understand, understand mainly English, and obviously there's people that don't understand Afrikaans at all. So um, if, you, um, are, if you can understand in English, the Afrikaans that my wife is ministering is exactly the same message. It's not something different. If she elaborates on a certain point, I will elaborate on it in English as well. So you won't lose the message. But if you understand both languages, it's just so more powerful because you get the same message in two languages. Then you can understand it. <laughs> I think it was yesterday. Uh, Ashley uh, sent me a, a, a voice message that says, Stanley, sometimes you must listen to your message two or three times to really grasp the intensity of your message. Now, if you, are, if you can understand Afrikaans and English, you, are, you already get it in two languages. Yes. So you get two messages at the same time, then you can understand it so much better instead of listening it the second time afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can also try to all what my man in English say. Te translate naar Afrikaans toe. So as ik dat hier en daar mis, ik denk dat hem allemaal kan zo'n beetje Engels verstaan, vrees de Ja, yeah, the majority, even if you're Afrikaans, you can understand some English, but there are a lot of English folk that cannot understand Afrikaans. Now, praise the name of the Lord. If you're not from South Africa, we are from South Africa. We are living currently in the Western Cape in Langebaan. This is where we are residing. So we are broadcasting from the Western Cape in Langebaan. If you want to know where we are, and you're most welcome to come and visit us. Yes. We have a place for you. We've got two uh, bedrooms, one double bed, two single beds. And <laughs> God has provided. We didn't even buy it. It was here when we moved in. And um, with all the bedding and trimmings that, uh, that goes along with it, uh, so if you are in the vicinity and if you just want to come and say hi and you want to overnight or stay a week or three or for whatever, <laughs> you are most welcome <laughs> to so, come and just spend time with us yes. and we with you will we will gladly um, host you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, yeah, so yes, baie welkom om by ons te kom keier. Mm. Jy kan kom oorslap, jy kan kom koffie drink, jy kan kom koekies eet. Ek hoor gestrand, joh, die koekies word gebak. Daar sal hoeveel? Acht te zijn, acht, acht kilogram, kilogram, acht kilogram. Weet je, voor koekjes is in een kilogram niet. En ik werd daar bij Fransie en Kathleen is die borst gemaakt. Dat is bokken wat opgesneden. Weet dat niet bokken. Ze vrees die jaren ons is opgewonden. En vandaag natuurlijk is dag 35 voor ons conferentie. Ze yes. die tijd vliegt nou ongelooflijk. Now, now we don't counting in 10 days anymore. Now we counting every five days. Yes. So 35 days today until the conference. <laughs> And um, uh, and all, all the, the the arrangements are in place. 
Yes. And I hope your arrangements are placed. I hope that your bags are packed already, waiting just to go to the conference in Hartenbos. It will be 2 to 6 October, if the Lord willing. Amen. Um, in Hartenbos, it's, um, I think that's yeah, that's still part of the Western Cape. Yes. Mossel Bay area. So if you don't know where is Hartenbos, it's a Mossel Bay area. Yes. <laughs> Die blomme nou vat oor. <laughs> so jylle was net te vroeg vir al hierdie blomme, so ons het nou die beste view hier so. <laughs> die blommetjes blom so, dat lyk of hulle wil kraak en bars. Maar hulle maak ons siekies. Jo, dit is net sinus, maar dit is baie mooi, <laughs> daarom. Ah, de boere sê, jippie, koekies en vlees, yes, we have got koekies en vlees so far. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> ah, daar is Carissa ingeskakel, prijs jyre vir die jong mense, ek het nou nou vir Carika gesien, ek denk ek het vir Carika gesien, ek kan nie lekker sien nie. Yes. So ons, um, jy het ook al die jong mense volgend welkom, die jong mense spring so my in die bybelskoor, jy wil, Dit is net amazing om te hoor. Hulle verslind onder in die bybelskool. So dit is net een opgewone saak en ach, allemaal kom net los en vry en ons loof die Heere en bly vir ons jong mense bid. Maar ek kan vir jy sê, die maas en paas het meer gebed nodig om die leiding te gee, om hulp te verleen. So bid ook baie vir die maas en paas. Ja, yeah, uh, the parents has got their own issues and they must help their children, but as a body of Christ together it can happen. And so the parents can get guidance, the children can get guidance, we can guide each other and help each other, yes. and so the Lord willing, everyone will grow in the Lord, if faith will grow, the spiritual ability will grow, the fruit yes. of the Spirit in them will grow, and so if it grows in one and it shares with the other one, and, th- and in that way, we all grow together. Praise the name of the Lord. Ek sien de boere sê so, Avani is ek ingeskakel, ek kan nou net nie haar sê nie, maar goeiemorgen Avani, prijs die Heere. Ja, Amri sê, ek het so baie geld betaal om na Makkoland toe te gaan om blomme te sien en jylle krij dit vir niet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ek sê vir Stanley, dankie Heere, ek hoef nooit te betaal het om dit te sien nie, want dit so een groot teleerstelling mm-hmm. gewees het. Maar prijs die Heere, ons sien dit vir niet. <laughs> Loof die Heere. Yeah, so praise the name of the Lord, we're gonna open in prayer. I just want to give some uh, uh, um, announcements. Yes, announcements. Um, ons afkondigings vir die week is, um, ons het nie meer dinsdag ochende woord in gebed nie. Ons het wel woensdag aande half 7 gemeente keier, waar ons so lekker saam keier. Ek denk, dit is omtrend na die hoogtepunt van die week, wat ons net so lekker onderwerpe bespreek, wat nog so bykie onduidelik is. As jy iets sê, wat nog nie duidelik is, jy is een bliefvra. Daar is baie vraag wat op hierdie stadium deerkom. En dan kom die mense achter, wat verstaan mense nog nie en wat verstaan mense al. Yes. En dit is, dit is verskriktelijk belangrijk. Soos jy groei, gaan jy dinge begin verstaan. Yes, so gaan jy begin dinge klik. Um, Voor ochend toe denk ek daaran, daar die eerste dag toe ek saam met Stanley die nachtmal moest bedien, en ek kyk so op my screen, toe lyk het of alles so swem, en ek weet nie wat ek hier sien nie, en het is my so die mekaar. En volgend toe ek het lees, denk ek, seriously, het ek so gevoel? So wat nou gebeur is, mens groei, mens yes. um, begin opstaan, en dan begin mens dinge baie beter verstaan, en jy sien dinge anders, met die ander oog, en Amen. so aan. So gee jy self een kans, vraag, vraag, breek dier, loof die Heere, en um, dan het ons dan uh, donderdag aand ook weer gem, um, die bybelskool uitsending dier Kathleen. Nou, dit is die hyveliks les deel 4 wat uitgesaai gaan word. Ek kan vir jou sê, as die hyvelik aan die licht kom, jo, daar is al baie vraag en baie onzekerheid en dinge wat uitkom en dinge. So, luister het lekker dier, gaan soek die Heere oor jou saak. Moe nie angstig raak nie, moe nie verboureerd raak nie, gaan soek die Heere oor jou saak. Hy sal jou saak vir jou uitsorteer, as jou hart oprecht is, God is oprecht. Yes, en dan vrijdag ochend gaan ons kyk net hoe werk ons loud shedding skedule, maar dan het ons half 6 woord in gebed saam met my en my man, en dan sondag ochend weer ons uitsending achter die ochend. Yes, amen, praise the name of the Lord. So we've got our services Wednesday 6.30 evening, and then if the Lord willing, it depends all on the loud shedding, how we going to, uh, exactly what time slot our, uh, our um, broadcast will be, in Friday 5.30 in the morning, and then 8 o'clock, if the Lord willing, next Sunday. So praise the name of the Lord. Closer to the conference, we will also inform you of our services, because there might be a service or two that we're going to miss before the conference and one or two after the conference. But in the, on the conference, we're going to make up for every last <laughs> service. Yes. And we, we are busy preparing ourselves spiritually as well. And um, just to... <clears throat> 
confirm that we are busy. It's in our minds, it's in our hearts. And I thank yeah. you for your prayers as well. The Lord is really giving us um, uh, hints. Yeah. <laughs> and, favor. Uh, favor. Favor, yeah. The Lord is really giving us favor. And thank you so far for everyone that has done their bit. Um, that is already um, Francie and Kathleen. I haven't <coughs> thanked them in English. They made a vors, so we have vors. <laughs> and Michelle has made a cookie, so we have got cookies, that's biscuits. <laughs> and vors is sausages if you don't so have we a, have got biscuits and if, meat. <laughs> if you're in South Africa, it doesn't matter what language you are. Vors is vors. It's yeah. not sausages. And cookies is cookies. Cookies is cookies, not biscuits. <laughs> but if you're not local, uh, then okay, it's biscuits and sausage. I've seen Ruaida, I've and I've seen they said the blomme there is also unbelievably good. They also like the wet blomme so snow. Wow, this is just amazing. Yeah, so he snow that blomme. Praise the Lord, wet blomme. So I mean, praise the Lord. We're gonna start with prayer, and then afterwards we're gonna first gonna do the communion. So if you've got bread and grape juice, please get it re ready, and then we're gonna do the communion, and then afterwards we're gonna talk about the very. <laughs> Very familiar and interesting topic, and that's the yeah. Tower of Babel. Yeah, that's what I said. Here is an awesome verse. <laughs> this is amazing. It, Tower of Babel is not just a Sunday school lesson. story no. or lesson. Yes, yeah. it is. A, there's a real reality, spiritual lesson that we can learn from oh, this. Man. Jy Riley is soer van koekies en hy soek sommer nou koekies. Oh my, sorry Hansje. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and arose from the dead. And through him, he's our mediator. And I thank you, Father, you've set a mediator because we as man are too sinful to enter into your presence. Father, you are so holy. Sin cannot enter in your presence. Sin can, you cannot bear sin because you are Father. Your entire being is encapsulated with fire, Father. If I when I read there in Ezekiel how he describes the, your glory, Father, it's fire. And your word says you are a father. He is a fertier and a fear, Father. Your word is like fire yeah. that consumes every darkness and sin. And therefore we need it and mediate it. And I thank you, Father, you've sent forth your word, your son, Jesus Christ, to be a mediator, to be a, the, the propitiation for our sin, uh, the atonement sacrifice for yeah, our yeah, sin. Yeah. And through him we can come to you, Father. You you grant us access, Father, so that we can speak to you. And Jesus, you said it so uh, so, so, so beautifully in, in John. You say that the Father loves us. And we're gonna, just going to speak directly to him in your name. Because the Father loves us. And Lord Jesus, you loved us as well that you came and gave your life. Open the door so that we can speak to the Father and that we can have communion with the Father. If you have communion with the Father, we have communion with you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And I thank you through the power of your Holy Spirit. This is all possible because we receive your Spirit Amen. through your Son, Jesus Christ, Father. <coughs> and I thank you for that. And I glorify your holy name. Therefore, we can be here this morning. And we can talk to each other, we can speak to each other, we can find wisdom, peace, deliverance, Father, from you through the power of your Holy Spirit that concurs and that agrees with your word. And I thank you for that. Thank you that you will reveal your word this morning once again into our hearts that we can understand, that we can become free, that we can become a new person, a new born again person. We must grow in the depth of Jesus Christ so that his life may also be manifested every single day. And the longer we serve, the longer we endure, the longer we we carry on, Father, in steadfastness, Father. Amen. He woord sê vir ons, eet is standvastige gesintheid, bewaar Amen. u in volle vrede. As daar standvastigheid is, Vader, baie keer gaan het nie oor, Heere, om baie om flamboyant te wees, om Heere groot te wees in mense se oor nie, maar standvastigheid. Dit is wat volharding is, die standvastigheid. Dit is wanneer een mens vrede krijgt. Heere my God, en ek sê vir die baie dankie dat ons vandag weer eens by u kan leer om hierdie standvastigheid te kry, 
Heere, jy sê in die een gemeente ook, jy het min kracht gehad, maar jy het aan my woord van leidsamheid vastgehou. Sometimes you feel like you don't have a father, you don't have enough faith. Sometimes you feel like your whole world is collapsing around you. But if we can be steadfast in the word of faith, in the word of true father, eventually we will come through for through all our calamities, through all our distresses, yeah. through all our tribulations that we endure every single day. To, to say, Father, you have a way to sustain us. You have a way to encourage us. You have a way to uplift us. Wow. And I thank you, Father, through your word, it is all possible. And today we want to hear your word. Today we wanna, when we're going to have communion, we want to manifest that we Amen. want to be part yes. of the body of Jesus Christ. Father, and also have communion with his blood, have communion with his with his body, so that we can grow as a spiritual house to build this new Jerusalem, to be partakers, to be builders together with our Father. And I thank you, Lord, that we can hear your word so that we can be encouraged through it. And we want to pray for every heart, everyone that today are in distress that you will uplift and that, that, that I might uh, have uh, uh, get answers and so Father become new in their heart. Oh, hulle God. Father wat Heere gebind is, hulle wat in hulle gedacht is, of het dier onkunde is, of maar net, Heere ek weet nie hoekom nie, of het dier verslaving is, of iets wat hulle vasthou, wil ons vraag dat die woord, asjeblief sal die ingang vind in elkense hart, om die hart van die mens los te maak, Amen. want is vir ochend belangrik, dat die hart loskom, Amen. as die hart loskom, dan yes, maak het nie saak, wat in die uiterlijke gebeur nie, jy dra ons dier, en jy voorsien vir ons, en jy geef ons ook oorwinning in dit, en ek sê vir jy, baie dankie vader, in Jesus naam. Baie, baie dankie heren, dat jy ook volgend vir ons weisheid, <coughs> in sig verleen, heren, om die woord te bedien, Heere, my God, dat het elke siel volgens sal losmaak, jy weet hoe dit ons harte losgemaak, hoe dit met ons gepraat en gedeel in ons innerlijke, Heere, die woord van jy sê, dit is so mooi, dat die, Heere, die koninkryk van jy is, soos die seerdeeg waar, en die seerdeeg, die deeg waar, die seerdeeg ingemeng word, yes, en dit word so amen. ingeknie, Heere, en elke stikkie, Heere, word, uh, Heere, seer gemaakt, dier die seerdeeg, en dit is hoe die koninkryk van jy yes, is, amen. Heere, dit word so ingewerk, Heere, tot amen. alles vol is, Heere, van jy koninkryk, van jy kracht, en heerlijkheid, en verlossing, en vrijmaking, en woord, en Heere, dit is net so amazing om daar te denk, so jy werk, Heere, en ons werk saam, en Heere, wanneer ons die woord so bedien, dan werk ons, Heere, om hierdie seerdeeg so in te knie, en elkeen sy deeg, en elkeen werk saam om het na die tyd weer te doen. Heere, en dit het my so opgewonde gemaakt, Vader, en so kan ons groei in die koninkryk van u, so kan ons vol raak van die koninkryk yes, van u, Heere, as ek in een stuk deeg denk, en ek denk, hoe vol is hy met die seerdeeg, en hy reis, en hy word so groot, Heere, dan denk ek, Vader, dit is hoe ons kan wees in die koninkryk yes, van u, en ons sê net vir u so baie dankie volgend daarvoor, dat u net krachtig vir ons deurbreek, dat u yes. Bande losmaak en bande vrijmaak vir oogend. Amen. Heere, dat u hier die, die woord gebruik, vader. Heere, om met ons te praat, volgend. Yes, ons sê vir die baie dankie, dat ek en my man het kan bedien in liefde en vrede. Heere, dat die woorde van ons met sout besprinkel sal word, heere. En dat ons het net krachtig kan deurbreek, soos wat u dit in ons harte vir ons gesit het, heere. Baie dankie daarvoor in Jesus naam. Amen. I mean, praise the name of the Lord. Oh, so sweet. What is sweet there? Yeah, that is that, that the royal cookies has again. Sweet, sweet cookies. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> you know, uh, when we were children's uh, tastes are different. Uh, when we are children, our, your tastes are different than when you are, as you are growing old. So most children, if they are little, up till a certain age, you just want sweeties. You don't care about chocolates, okay? Now, Marizel, she always loved sweeties. If you gave her a chocolate, she wouldn't eat it, she will give it to her sisters, because she want sweeties, okay? Now, the other day, when her father, um, when her father, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's her father birthday. <laughs> when, it's, when it was, a, was her father's birthday, um, he, he received lint chocolate, the little balikis, you know, the little balls. And she said, I never 
never got lint chocolate for my birthday. I want lint chocolate for my birthday, but she never wanted it. Ja, so sy word nou groot, so sy verstaar die waarde van chocolate. Yes. So I just thought it was maybe something about sweeties. Ja, nee, it's not sweeties. But wanneer jy groter, wanneer jy ouwer word, dan hy weer van sweeties, so ek is ook die sweetie idee. Ja, I don't know if you've ever been like too wimpy or whatever, you always see the uh, old women, Tani, they come in there, and the very first thing they order, or milkshake. most of the time, it's all they order, each one a milkshake. Yes. Most of the time, it's a pink milkshake or a green milkshake. <laughs> and they order the milkshake. So, yes. yeah, I think we're going to that direction as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you want all the sweets again. I think it's just to get up the... the, 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 the Blood the, sugars. Yes. The energy. <laughs> the energy. The energy. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Uh, to mo- this morning we're going to continue with the Lord's Supper, um, Holy Communion, as some might know it. And I just want to, um, just to reiterate it, um, it's also called the sacrament. Now why it's called the sacrament? Now your water, water baptism is also a sacrament. Now a sacrament is the visible act of an inward belief. Mm. It's not the visible that gives meaning to the inward but it's the inward that gives meaning to the act that you are doing. That's why it's called a sacrament. Um, in a lot of churches, they, they use the word sacrament. Now, if you want to partake with us in the Holy Communion, please prepare your bread and your grape juice. So ja, ons gaan vandag die nachtmaal gebruik. Nou, die nachtmaal ken ons as een sakrament, soos wat die doop ook een sakrament is, nee. En dit is een sigbare daad van een innerlijke geloosvertuiging. So jy het die innerlijke geloosvertuiging en jy doen een sigbare daad. Yes. Nou, die, dit is nie die sigbare wat die, die betekenis gee aan die innerlijke nie, maar die innerlijke geloof wat betekenis gee aan die uiterlijke daad. So dit gaan oor die hart, die innerlijke Dit gee die betekenis daarvan. So jy doen om uiterlik, maar die betekenis is binnen, in die hart. Nou, as jy wil deel jy aan die nachtmal, kry gerus jou broekie en jou druive sap gereed. Now, our main reading will be from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. But I'm just going to read two extra verses. That's Sing that. I know. <laughs> just two extra verses that... <laughs> <laughs> that actually complements this entire scripture. <laughs> One Corinthians. <laughs> My wife is always telling me, you're always going to say something that we haven't prepared oh, fully. But, 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 but this is just a reading of the yeah, scripture. Awesome. And then, then we're going to continue with <laughs> the welcome. rest. Sure. We're welcome. Share. <laughs> <Don't mention. laughs> <I> appreciate. <laughs> okay, so let us read 1 Corinthians 10. First of all, 1 Corinthians 10 verses 5. 14 to 17, 1 Corinthians 10, 14 to 17. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to a wise man, as to wise men, judge for yourself what I say. The cup of blessing, which we bless, now this is the grape juice, is it not the communion of the blood of Jesus Christ? So you have communion with the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus are pure and holy, and sure. we must think of that when we partake of the Holy Communion. That's why it's called the Communion, because it's communion with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So, when you take the bread and you take a, you take a sip of the grape juice, you have communion symbolically. You have, if you believe it in your heart, and then there's an outward manifestation that you do, that you say, I have communion, I am part of the body of Jesus Christ, and I partake of His blood and of His body. Now verse 17, For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. So there's only one Jesus Christ, there's not two, and when we partake of it in the name of Jesus Christ with the right motive, we are all one in Jesus Christ and partake of the one body of Jesus Christ. 
so sie ist in 1 Korinther 10, Vers 14 bis 17 in Afrikaans. Darum mein Geliebtes, flüch für die Afgehörer Dienst. Ich spreche so mit verstandigen Menschen, urteil selbst, was ich sage. So als du recht urteil, ist du verstandig. Ja. Die Beker von Danksaging, was uns mit Danksaging sehen, ist das nicht die Gemeinschaft mit dem Blut von Christus? Nie? Die Brot, was uns spreche, ist das nicht die Gemeinschaft mit dem Lichaum von Christus? Nie? So als du das recht bedoelt und du hast äh, Ich deel an die Nachmal, dann hat die Gemeinschaft an die Blut von Christus und an die yes. Lichaam von Christus. Yes. Omdat es ein Brot ist, ist es allemaal ein Lichaam, weil uns hat allemaal deel an ein Brot. So, das ist Jesus Christus, wo uns allemaal ingehend ist, er ist die Weinstock, uns ist allemaal die Lood, uns ist allemaal die ein Lichaam, uns kriegen uns Opdrachten und alles in um, Alles was wir tun müssen, yes. von der Herr Jesus Christus ab, er ist die Hof von ihrem Lichaam, so yes. es ist ein Lichaam in uns, weil es ist ein Brot, was uns eat, so uns auch Gemeinschaft mit dem Blut und dem Lichaam von Jesus Christus. Amen, so let us continue with our scripture reading in 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26, and then we're going to do the physical okay, Holy Communion. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26, For I received from the Lord, that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. <coughs> Do this in remembrance <coughs> of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's a new covenant. It's not a mixed covenant. It's a new. New means the old is past yeah. and everything has become new. Yes. This, of course, in the Old Testament, it, uh, the, the, the covenant were, were confirmed with the blood of animals. Yeah. Now, Jesus Christ confirms the New Testament with His blood. Yes. Okay? This does... This does, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that is the purpose, the conclusion of the Holy Communion. We have communion with his blood, uh, with his blood and his body, and in it we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because Jesus rose from the dead, it's intertwined with each other. So we proclaim the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think that now, and that's certainly for us young people that we're going to eat again again again. Yes. So, when we're young people, for us young people that now to the bekering have come, so we praise the Lord. We're so happy that we're going to eat again again again. Yeah, even if you are, as you're a young person, is in, you have now to the bekering come, but, Jy moet nog gedoop word, mag jy nou nachtmal gebruik, ja. want jy staan nie dit tegen nie, yes. dit is nou maar net geleentheid wat hom moet voordoen, dat jy wel gedoop kan word. So asjeblief, as jy werkelijk op die kering gekom het, mag jy vandag nachtmal gebruik, want jy gaan nog gedoop word. Prijs die Heere, dit is awesome. Nou ons lees jy in 1 Korintiërs 11 vers 23 in Afrikaans, want ek het um, van die Heere ontvang, wat ek ook aan jylle oorgelever het, dat die Heere Jesus in die nacht waarin hy vir haar brood geneem het, en nadat hy gedank het, het hy het gebrek en gesê, neem eet, <coughs> dit is my lichaam wat vir jylle gebrek word, doen dit tot my, nageda- tot my gedachten is. En dan lees ons in vers 25, net so ook die beker na die ete met die woorde, hier die beker is die nieuwe testament in my bloed, doen dit so dikwels as jylle daaruit drink tot my gedachten is. Want so dikwels as jylle daaruit, um, as, so dikwels as jylle hier die brood eet en hier die beter, beker drink, verkondig jylle die dood van die Heere, totdat hy kom. Yes, amen. Nee, ek kan daar eigen kommentaar bykie geef. Ok, so, um, hier kan ons sien dat die, do- um, die doel van die nachtmal is om die dood van Jesus te verkondig, totdat hy weer kom, en die boodskap van sy dood is een verkondiging, totdat ons verlos is uit die macht van die sonde en die dood, so dat ons die ewige evangelie saam met hom kan beherwe. So ja, met die nieuwe testament is ons losgekoop, van die oud testament, van daar die bloed van bokke en stiere, wat ons die kon losmaak nie, yes, en nou het die Heer Jesus Christus gekom, hy het die nieuwe testament kon bevestig met sy bloed, so nou kan ons loskom van die wet en vloek en al die dinge, so dat ons die Heere kan dien in gees en waarheid. Ja, yeah, the reason Heere. why we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ and why the communion is the manifestation thereof, because when Jesus Christ died, he made an end to the old covenant and uh, um, started the new covenant and in the old covenant everyone was still uh, um, bound 
to, <laughs> to, the, to um, sin and unrighteousness. Because there was no law that could have freed man, Amen. no animal sacrifice, no law or institution that could free man from the, the clutches of the devil that he had through sin in our lives. And Jesus Christ, when he died, he overcame the devil. Amen. He broke that, uh, 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 that attachment. That's the word yes. I'm looking for all the time. That attachment. And his blood broke it. And that's why we are proclaiming it so that so many more people can hear why we, are, why, uh, why we are serving the Lord, why we are doing the Holy Communion, so that more and more people can lose the, that um, attachment to sin and Amen. the works of darkness. So that when the day when you die, that you can go to heaven and not to uh, hell. Praise the Lord. Yes, Amen. So what you can do, you can get your uh, communion element ready, your bread and your grape juice, and we're going to continue with the physical um, communion. <laughs> so, you can your brood, your sticky brood, rach kry in your driver sap, and now gaan ons dit um, die nachtmal saam gebruik. Yes, and we're going to take the bread in our hand, and we're going to pray first before we're going to continue. Father, I thank you in the name of your Son Jesus Christ that today we have a privilege to manifest and to act out our, our inner belief that we want to partake and we are partakers of the body of Jesus Christ. We are partakers of His blood and that we want to, Father, keep on preaching, Amen. Father, and proclaiming that Jesus Christ came to die to break, Father, the works of evil, the works Amen. of the devil that He, Father, manifest in the world through sin and unrighteousness every single day. The, the hopelessness that this world has, Father. The fear of death that the world has at this very moment. And we want to proclaim it, Father. And I pray in the name of Your Son, Jesus Christ, that our proclamation won't be just here and uh, for us to see, but that uh, more and more people may come across this ministry today, that they can understand there's a loving God, there's a God that wants to set us free from depression, from anxiety, from all the sin and bondages and the things that ties us and steal our hope and steal our inner peace. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and today we want to, Father, proclaim that, we want to announce it, and we know, Father, from Scripture that when we do partake of it, we announce it, we proclaim it in the spiritual world as well, so that everybody, every single spiritual being, Father, can hear it. Amen. And Father, hallelujah, can lose its hold over souls in this day. Doesn't matter where they're in the world, doesn't matter what language and culture they are, Father, that the, that, that the devil can lose its hold over people, that you can start talking to them and change them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can take a, a piece of your bread. You don't have to take a big piece. You can take a small piece. You can break it and give it to each other. And if you are alone, just break it and take it yourself. So okay, you can, can I stick it from your bread? Fight and I can I sit so near. Now, after the supper, Jesus took the cup. And this is what the Bible teaches us. He took the cup, and we have the grape juice. Uh, in biblical times, it was still wine, but it's the same. It's the fruit of the grapevine, and this is the grape juice. And he said, this, is, this, is a, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, does it in remembrance of me. So you can um, pour out your... Uh, grape juice, and you can take a sip. Daarna had hy die beker geneem na die ete met die woorde, hier is die beker van die Nieuwe Testament in my bloed, doen het so dikwels as jylle daaruit dit drink, tot my gedachten is. Jy kan een slikkie van die druive sap neem. <coughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord for His goodness and His greatness. We believe that everybody could have taken part in the Holy Communion. If you Amen. don't do, if you haven't 
uh, if you weren't ready with our live broadcast, you can listen and watch afterwards as well. Yes, ons is blij dat allemaal saam met ons die nachtmaal kon geniet en saam met ons kon gebruik vir oogend en ons gaan oorbeweeg na die bediening van die woord. And, I think that's going to make our stomach turn, our next communion is at the conference. Nee. <laughs> <laughs> so it will, it, it will extend a week further, but our next communion will be at the conference. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, uh, just to remind you that, that with our uh, conclusion service, if the Lord willing, at the conference, that will be the Thursday, 10 o'clock, the morning service. We're going to have baptism and we're going to have Holy Communion. And uh, with that service, we're going to conclude our conference just to inform Amen. you if you haven't received the memo yet. Yes, praise the Lord. So, on the Donnerdag, the last Donnerdag wat ons eindelijk daar is, gaan ons uh, doopdienst hou, daar gaan ons allemaal doop wat so die laaste tyd tot bekering gekom het, van ons jong mense, van ons ouwe mense, en dan gaan ons ook een nachtmaldienst hou, en daarmee so'n beetje afsluit met die geestelike deel van die conferentie. Prijs die Yes, Heere. amen. So, praise the name of the Lord, this, more, this morning we're going to talk uh, to you about the Tower of Babel. Now, now a message, we must understand, most of the time when we do deliver a message, and a message like this is mainly for born-again believers. Because yeah. we as born-again believers must understand something. Yes. It's not exclusive, but I can uh, the lesson that we can learn from here, the spiritual lesson, the spiritual reality, yeah. is for us as born-again believers. Now, obviously, an unbeliever can also hear the message, and they can repent, and so they can also understand the word of God and be saved in that Amen. way. Amen. So, as gaan volgens een beetje praat oor die toering van Babel. Nou, ons wil vir jy sê dat hierdie boodskap is vir die kind van die Heere, wat laat sy hart vir die Heere gegeet, wat laat het wedergeboorte gekom het. Um, so, die woord praat volgend met ons, en um, so ja, dit geef vir ons nogal een groot les volgend uit die woord, <laughs> en hoe ons baie ding in ons leven gaan verstaan, na hierdie, na hierdie dienst, sê ek vir jy, dit gaan baie diep in die haar praat, het het ons so losgemaak, ons het vir ure belei, <laughs> na hierdie boodskap, so ja, baie keer, denk ons, dit is vir die sondag, maar dit is wel vir die kind van die Heere, hierdie boodskap. Now the main, the main thing we're going to focus in, why did God confuse the languages uh, of the people after the flood? Because we must remember that this instance of the Tower of Babel happened after the flood. Yeah. Okay, it's one of sons, one of Noah's sons, descendants, um, Ham, um, Nimrod, built this uh, a city. And why did God confuse the languages? There are a reality regarding this, and we need to understand that this morning. So, ons gaan hier kyk, waarom goed die taal van die mense verwar het na die vloed. So, tot en met die vloed, um, tot en by die babel, het allemaal die selfde taal gepraat. So, hoekom het God het verwar? Hoekom het hy dit het ingekom en hierdie taal verwaar in die mens. Um, so ons gaan volgend bykie daarna kyk, want um, Nimrod het toe hierdie stad gebouw van Babel en die afstammelinge van Gam. Gam, nee, yes. Sê yes. Gam Javed, so yes. Gam. <laughs> Dit was hulle wat hier betrokken was, so ons gaan so bykie daarna kyk. Yes. This is going to be interesting. Ah, Naomi, I tuned in live this yes. morning. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Okay, our scripture reading will be from Genesis 11 verses 1 and one to 9. First of all, we didn't want to read the scripture and we, and we decided we're going to read the entire, yeah. it's nine verses, but it's so much, uh, uh, the, the word describes himself better than we can describe. Yeah. And then from that, we're going to elaborate. So it's Genesis 11 verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read and then my wife's going to read in Afrikaans and then we're going to continue with the sermon. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Now that speech is words. Yes. <laughs> the Afrikaans is... is, is yeah, mag my nou sê nie. Yes, the Afrikaans <laughs> is... Druk het beter uit. <laughs> ja. How does it say? Druk het beter uit. Give me a translation <laughs> there. So, say it beter. Druk yeah. beter. Uh, I say print. But when we help them, please. Drink <laughs> print. Ach, my moeder, die al wel het is, weet ik. Yes. Okay, verse 2. 
And it came to pass as they express. Express. Thank as you, Anneke. Anneke. No, no, Anneke, no, yes. no, no, work is mooi, dear. Yes, the one day she, she, she um, prayed uh, in English. Prayed in English. Wow. It sounds like a real English lady yes. there from Fred and Tal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sinyar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. Now if you bake bricks thoroughly, it is just a lot stronger. That's why they had to bake it. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. And this is very important. Let's make a name for ourselves. Lest we scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. At this moment, I'm just thinking of King Solomon. He also, or no, King Saul who also erected a statue for himself. Mm -hmm. so, the, so humanity are always there to exalt themselves yeah. in, other, in one or other way. Yes. They want to do something outward and physical for other people to see them. Mm -hmm. Okay, They want to create an identity, a signature of themselves outwardly and not realize it's, it, God, we must become humble so that God can exalt us spiritually to overcome the works yeah. of evil. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of man had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. But it's, it sounds great to be one and one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. And I said to my wife, even if you look at the situation of Cain and Abel, sometimes things look unfair. Yeah. But this morning we want to, we want to, uh, um, clarify. Uh, 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 <laughs> clarify the reality mm. of this. Why did God confuse these languages? Yes. Why did He bring uh, a confusion and division in man from that moment onward? Come, let us go down and they confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the languages of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Now come as lees it here in Afrikaans. Hy sê in Genesis 11 vers 1 tot en met, waar is ons? 9. 9. Yes. Um, hy sê so mooi, hy sê die, in die hele aarde het die selfde taal gehad en een en die selfde woorde. Jo, yes. dit is nogal amazing, nee. En toe hulle wegtrek na die ooste, vind hulle een laagte in die land Sina hier en daar het hulle gaan woon. Daarop sê hulle vir mekaar, laat ons sene vorm en het goed brand. Hulle gebruikte die baksene en verbouwsteen en die luimgrond vir klein. En hulle sê, kom laat ons vir ons een stad bou en een toren waarvan die spits tot aan die jimmel raak en laat ons vir ons een naam maak so ons nie oor die hele aarde verstrooi wraak nie. So hulle wou vir hulle self een naam maak, een gedenk standbeeld story, so dat hulle daar gevestig kan wees. Nou, dit is wat my man sê, en um, koning sal sy tyd ook het, hy ook vir my die standbeeld opgerig, so dat hy vir my die naam kon tot stand bring. Amal moes van hom weet, so dit is een selverhoogende saak eindelijk in die mense hart. So. En dan sê hy vers, uh, vers 5, Toe daal die Heere neer, om die stad en die toren te besien, waar aan die mense gebouw het, en die Heere sê, Daar is hulle nou een volk en amal een taal. Nou dit ja. klik vir ons goed. Daar is hulle nou een volk en amal een taal. En dit is net die begin van hulle onderneming. <laughs> so dit is maar die begin van dit wat hulle beplan het. En God het het geweet. En nou sal niks vir hulle meer onmoendlik wees wat hulle beplan het om te doen nie. Kom laat ons neerdal, dit was my so cool gewees. Ek sê yeah. vir my man, dit was seker God in Jesus, want alles word dier Jesus gedoen, nee. So Jesus het ook hulle taal kom. Yes, van, amen. Want so, is dier Jesus wat het verwaar gekom. Yes, so kom laat ons neerdal, en hulle taal daar verwaar, so dat die een die taal van die ander nie kan verstaan nie. So het die Heere hulle dan daar vandaan oor die hele wereld aarde verstrooi, en hulle het, um, opgebou om, en hulle het opgehou om die stad te bouw. 
Daarom het hulle dit, um, dit babel genoem, want daar het die Heere die taal van die hele aarde verwar, en daar vandaan het die Heere hulle oor die aarde verstrooi. Ok, so when we, when we uh, see here, everybody's language were the same. Why were the same? Because they all were descendants of Noah. Because after the flood, it was Noah's three sons, and through, through them the genealogy and the generation started. And we sometimes miss it that from Adam, uh, from Adam and Eve until Bible, it was just logic that everybody just spoke the same language. Yeah. <laughs> so the people after the flood and before the flood, they also had the, exactly the same language and words. <laughs> yes, and words. <laughs> uh, so they intended to build a city and a tower to stop would reach heaven. So they never got there, but that was their desire in their heart to do it. Now, furthermore, they wanted to establish a name, and we briefly just touched on that. They wanted to establish a name for themselves mm. that they would not scatter over the earth. While the Lord said in the beginning, when He created um, uh, um, man and woman, and even after the fall of sin, uh, you must fill the earth. Yeah. So you must scatter all over the earth. You must not bundle up here in one little corner of the earth. Okay, because they wanted to exalt and ex establish themselves. That is the name they wanted to create. Uh, and sometimes we are so, um, and even when I remember a few years ago, when I started a ministry here on Facebook, I had this in my mind. What does a name really mean? I don't want to exalt, I don't want to, ex I want to exalt a name. And I really had a struggle. It was a real struggle for yes, me. Sir. I didn't want to be uh, uh, another church with another name. And everyone belonged to this name church. And it was a real struggle. You must understand it today. Just for us to say the online cat. Because you must type in a name. <laughs> you must do it's something. Yeah. And just to establish you. And, my, and just to say this is where you can find this ministry. So it's never been. To us about the name. Never ever. It was a real struggle for me. Now it sounds logical. When people want to unite. But in this instance as well. And we will see as the message develop. How sinister is it. When, when people want to unite. Without God in their lives. <laughs> now all the men say the same thing. Now the same thing. Now the same thing. Ach, fluk. Vloed, omdat hulle afstammelinge na Noachs, uh, van Noachs seens was, nee. Nou, ons mis baie keer die punt, dat allemaal in die selfde taal gepraat, van Adam eer af tot by Babel. Niemand het een verskillende taal gepraat, die alles was die selfde taal geweest tot dan. Hulle was een volk met een taal met een woorde. Okay. So hulle het besluit om een toering te bou, wat tot aan die jimmel raak. En verder wou hulle vir hulle naam maak op die aarde om nie verstrooi te raak nie. So hulle wou hulle self verhoog, hulle wou hulle self vestig op hierdie plek dat allemaal van hulle weet. Want hierdie toren moes uitstaan, allemaal moes weet van hierdie um, stad en hierdie toren. Nou dit het natuurlijk gerecht, uh, na die rechte ding geklink om te doen, want as jy nou wil sê, ons is in die eenheid en ons praat die selfde taal en alles, en klink het moest nou goed, <laughs> klink moest nou wow. Maar God het geweet nie, dit moet nie so wees nie, want God het gesê, van die begin af, vermeerder en vul die aarde, moet nie hier so kloek om uh, een stad Babel nie, vermeerder en vul die aarde. Nou dit klink baie keer onskuldig vir wat hulle gedoen het. Maar as ons nou gaan kyk na die hele boodskap, gaan jy sien, dat hoe onderduims, hierdie onderneming wat hulle gehad het, eindelijk was. So, now, the main thing is, they wanted to establish a carnal unity and create a spiritual unit. So, it's a carnal spiritual unity, okay? Now, this spiritual uh, we are talking about is not a unity uh, of God, with God, through His Spirit. Because the Spirit of God wasn't in man or in the people anymore at, this, at that stage. And this is what we must understand. At that stage, the Spirit of God wasn't in, an, in man anymore. And this God, this God, uh, God revealed this to Noah. You can go and read in Genesis 6 verses 3. This is one of the reasons of the flood. Uh, God had to uh, um, destroy in the entire population of the earth up till that point for him to righteously 
remove the spirit within man's soul. So this unity they wanted to create wasn't a unity through God's spirit, but it was a carnal, fleshly, sinful unity. Sure. So hulle wou een vleeslike eenheid skep om een geestelike eenheid dier te bereik. So hulle wou in die vlees een raak, so dat hulle hierdie geestelike eenheid kan skep, soos hy mys het nou so kan stel. Nou hierdie geestelike eenheid was nie in die eenheid met God nie, omdat die geest van God nie meer in die mens was nie. So ons kan sien, met die, um, dit was met die afstammelinge na die vloed, was die geest van God nie meer in die mens gewees nie, want God het het geopenbaar aan Noach met die vloed. Toe het hy vir hom gesê, dat die geest sal nie meer in die mens wees nie. So dit was die doel van die vloed gewees, om dit rechtvaardig uit die mens uit te haal, so almal voor die tijd moes um, verdelg word, so dat God rechtvaardig lik die geest uit die mens kon haal. So van daaraf was die geest van die mens nie meer in die mens gewees nie. Ach, geest van God nie meer in die mens gewees nie. So hulle wou een eenheid skep, sonder so Godse geest, sonder die merewete van God, sonder om God deel van hulle te maak, wou hulle hierdie vleeslike eenheid skep. Nou dit lees ons, as, as jy nou wil gaan lees, waar, die, waar God die geest aan die mens uitgehaal het, dit is in Genesis 6 vers 3. So, now, when God decided to create different languages, there was more to it than just the languages that changed. And we don't realize it, but God created these languages and embedded or implanted in the people. Yeah. Everything that God does, when He speaks, when He does something that brings about a dramatic change. It is a creation. <laughs> and we don't see it as such. That's why this morning when we talked about the Holy Communion, when Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ said, I received a command. I'm the, I am the embodiment of the new covenant yeah. that God spoke. When God spoke, He creates something. Okay. <laughs> now, we never think of it uh, that God created the languages. Sure. But uh, if we think further on, uh, on this, when God created these languages, He dramatically and instantaneously changed people's DNA. We know it in our modern time as DNA. For them to speak and understand it. Have you yeah. ever thought of it? The moment when God created and changed it and gave certain languages to certain groups of people, they immediately understood each other. They immediately understood the words that they were talking in mm. one moment, just like that. Yeah. Wow, isn't that amazing, eh? Mm. Now, the result was that the people, that is also, that is just a natural or logical result. People were scattered all over the world, in other, world, in other words, worldwide, and because people scattered worldwide, and this we don't understand. Now, if God can in one moment change your entire being Amen. to understand in one moment a complete different language that you don't even understand the language that you came from. Because they mean that language they didn't understand. Otherwise, they would have stayed still with each other because now they had a new language and they understood the old language. But they, in one moment, they happened so much in the biology of man, in that DNA, yeah. that it created new races, tribes, nations, cultures, and obviously new traditions were formed yeah. from the new nations, cultures, and tribes. Isn't it so? Now, God brought about the confusion because He wanted to break the carnal unity that the people wanted to set up. Sure. Now, God has said that we can Afrikaans, but when God has made the different words, Het, um, het, hy, het hy die taal verander, en die mens het onmiddellik die taal wat hy verander het, en die mens dat verstaan, hy kon het praat, en hy kon dit um, verstaan. Ja. So dit was in een oomlik, het God hier die tale gemaakt, hy het geskep, ok, so dit was soos amazing, dit was yes. soos a wonderwerk, as hy <laughs> mooi daarna kyk. Dit is a miracle, ja. Yeah. Dit is a wonderwerk wat gebeur het, want hulle het onmiddellik hier die nieuwe taal gepraat, dit verstaan en um, God het die hele DNA van die mens verander. Dit was een hele verandering wat in die mens moest plaas vind, dat hy hier die taal kon aanneem, verstaan, praat, alles mekaar verstaan vir die wat die taal praat en dan het daar was nou groepe mense geweest. so hier die klomp het hier die gepraat en daar die klomp het daar gepraat, so wat het hier gebeur? God het gesorg, dat daar so een verwarring kom, tussen die mens, dat die vleeslike eenheid wat hulle wou hee, wat hulle wou by mekaar bring, 
verbreek word. En hulle moes oor die wereld verspreid, want toe kon hulle nie meer mekaar verstaan nie. <laughs> Dis is just amazing om daar aan te denk, en een oomlik ja. kon hulle mekaar nie meer verstaan nie, hulle kon nie meer die eenheid die band heen nie, so hulle moes toe nou verspreid, en um, dit het gemaakt, dat al verskille, verskillende rasse, stamme, nazies, kultuure en tradities gevorm het. Jy kan het vir jouself denk, toe hierdie mense nou verskillende tale praat, toe verspreid hulle nou, en uit dit uit, het al nieuwe rasse gevorm, stamme het gevorm, nazies het gevorm, kultuure, tradities, al die dinge, want dit is wat gebeur, wanneer mense in die eenheid kom, nee, so oor ons was daar mense gewees oor hier die wereld, so dit was net amazing om daar te denk, wat God in een oomlik in die mens laat gebeur het, en as jy nou mooi daarna kyk, hulle het sommer verskillend begin like, <laughs> hulle het begin anders optree, hulle het begin ander tradities sê, dis het soos amazing om daar aan te denk, wow, dis net awesome, so ek denk as ons rechtig kan verstaan, wat daar gebeur het met die verwarring, dan maak dinge vir ons baie in die bybel sin, so God het gesorg, want die mense wou in een vleeslike eenheid wees, en God, werk nie in die vleeslike eenheid nie, want die vleeslike eenheid is sonder God, sonder sy geest, die mens saam wil saamstaan, hulle wil self hulle hierdie naam bou en self belangrijk wees. Nou, um, God het die, uh, hierdie verwarring gebring om hierdie vleeslike eenheid te verbreek, wat tot stand gekom het tussen die mense. Hy is my nareer uh, scripture here quickly in um, Acts, now I've lost the Acts, uh, 17 verses 26, Acts 17 verses 26, just to confirm something here. Um, I'm just going to read a very first English translation that comes up here. From one man he made every nation of humanity to live all over the earth, fixing the seasons and the years. So from one man, from, and, and uh, he says in the King James, and he has made all nations of men of one blood to dwell on all the face oh. of the earth. So what does it say in Afrikaans? Um, hy het uit een bloed al die nazies van die mensdom gemaakt om oor die hele aarde te woon. Dit is net soos amazing. So dit yes. was uit een man het uit al die nazies gekom. Ja, so it doesn't matter what a skin color you have, what race you have, what language you have today, every single person on the planet comes from one blood. Ja, so dit maak jy saak wat er taal, nas, rasie, nasie hier vandag is nie. Ons kom uit een bloed, uit een man uit. Dit is net klaar amazing om aan te denk. Dit yeah. maak al klaar dat ons soveel dinge vandag van die mens gaan afval. And we're gonna continue and then we're gonna talk about further about this. Now, we can see the, uh, the, the, the carnal unity that they want to create. Uh, was against and without God's Spirit. So that yeah. is the main thing. They wanted to create this unity without God's Spirit. Now, why did they want to do it? Because they rebelled. Sure. They rebelled against God. They, it's as if they want to prove to God we can also be one. Sure. And we must remember one thing. They all were descendants of Noah's sons. And stories has been passed over through their generations, so they must have known about God and the flood. And what we don't realize, Noah also still lived when they built yeah. the Tower of Babel. Noah lived at that time. Yeah. So And Noah were a righteous man. So through Noah, he also taught his sons how to serve the Lord. So all the generations knew about the flood. They knew about God. They knew everything. And still they decided to continue in sin and create a carnal unity without the help of God. Now, the builder of uh, a Bible were Nimrod. Now, Nimrod, you can go and read in Genesis 10 verses 9 to 11. He built five cities in his lifetime. One was Babel. And the other one was Nineveh. And we also know Nineveh was also a very, very wicked city. To a point that God wanted to destroy Nineveh as well. Now, it's interesting. Nimrod's name means rebellion or violent. Sure. And the Bible says there in Genesis 10, he was a fearsome, mighty fighter in the sight of the Lord. Sure. Now, when we read in the sight of the Lord, it doesn't mean... He, God agreed with him. It's just that God sees everything. And in the sight of God, God saw that Nimrod was this mighty, fearsome fighter. Sure. Okay. 
Now, so the foundation of Babel and also Nineveh was established on rebellion. I'm going to do the thing like I'm going to do it. I'm not going to get God involved in my um, plans. creation plans and building of the city of the sure. uh, uh, um, of Babel. Now, amongst all the nations and periods, they also there was in up till that point and up till to the day, there were always people that wanted to serve the Lord. But we must understand the majority of people, even if you read through the history of Israel, the majority always rebelled against God. They always stood up against God and they always wanted to do their thing on their own terms and their own plans. Sure. Nou, as ons nou kyk, hulle was allemaal die afstammelinge van Noach en sy seens. Nou, die oorvertaling, moes hulle geweet het van die vloed en hoe om God te dien en al die dinge. En dit is so amazing om te denk dat Noach was hier die rechtvaardige man en hy het nog gelewe toe hulle Babel gebouw het. So hulle het geweet om God te dien, hulle het geweet wat die rechte ding is om te, om te doen. Nou, onder al die generaties... Um, was daar altyd mense wat die Heere gedien het. Daar was altyd mense wat op reg was. So, dit was nie dat hulle nie geweet het nie. Dit is nie dat hulle nie daarvan gehoor het nie. So, hulle het geweer dat God die vloed gebring het yes. en hierdie sondige mense verdelg het. En yes. toch in dit het hierdie nimrod <laughs> het hy opgestaan en hy het Babel gebouw. Hy was die initieerder gewees om Babel te bouw. Nou, dit lees ons hier in Gener- uh, Genesis 10 vers 9 tot 11. Nou, um, nimrod was ook moest nou een afstammeling van die seens van Noach. Yes. Okay? En sy naam beteken rebellie en geweldenaar. So hy was hierdie vreesloose, machtige vechter gewees. Hy was hierdie geweldadenaar gewees. Nou hy het hierdie fondatie van Babel gebouw op hierdie rebellie. Hy het met sy kracht en mag en sy rebelse geaardheid, het hy vir Babel gebouw en hy het ook natuurlijk vir Nineveh gebouw. Hy was die initieerder daarvan gewees. En ons sien dat, even met Nineveh, hy was so'n sondige, afvallige volk gewees, land gewees, stad gewees, stad, stad, stad gewees, stad, stad, stad. dat um, God wou hulle ook verdelg. So ja. mens kan sien dat die hele... Um, Saak hier wat gebeur het, was in een rebellie, was in een opstand, was in een gewelddadige opse gewees, want hulle wou vir God wees. Hulle sal nie vir hom luister nie, hulle sal hulle ding doen, hulle sal in een vleeslike eenheid kom, sonder God, sonder sy gees. I'm just thinking of it now, and this is what the word of God says here in Ecclesiastes 8 as well, that sometimes of God is um, has a lot of patience on us. And we continue in our own ways. And while God has patience over us, we continue to do the wrong thing. Now, when we read here um, of, of, of Nimrod, he was this mighty fighter in the sight of the Lord. And God had patience over him. Yeah. And he continued. He actually abused God's oh. grace and patience to continue his, in his rebellion and to continue this building and to create this unity. Mm. And he might have thought, my God is not going to see me. Yo. And God saw it and so we are in the same position. Yeah. We continue sometimes so, we are so headstrong that we continue in this rebellion as if God is not seeing us. Ja. ja, so omdat God soveel genade gehad het en Nimrod aangegaan het, het hy nog steeds in die rebellie aangegaan, asof God nie daarvan weet nie, asof God um, hom nie gaan raak sien nie. En dit is hoe ons baie keer opreid in ons geestelike lewe. Ons is baie keer hardkoppig en rebels en hy is sinnig in ons geestelike lewe. Ons gaan op het trant aan en het voel vir ons, maar ons kan aangaan, God is ons genade, God sien ons nie raak nie, God is ook okay met ons saak en dit is wat precies wat hier gebeur het met Nimrod. En ek denk dit kan vandag vir ons een geweldige les leer. Nee. Dat hy was hierdie geweldenaar, hy was hierdie vechter. En gister toe ek so witte, denk ek, jyre, dat in die mense ou natuur is jy baie keer hierdie baas vechter. Jo. Net jo. om daar, ek het gister toe denk ek, jyre, dat ek myself net bekeer, dat ek, ek weet nie hoe moet ek myself bekeer nie. Want mens gaan baie keer in gevechte in, mens gaan baie keer um, in strijd in, met ander mense, en jy is hierdie baas vechter, en jy het al hierdie naam van, weet jy wat, as jy nou in hierdie persoons het jy in woordigheid kom, hy kan jou nou vertel. En mens voel goed daar oor, 
Maar als een mens naar God zijn woord kijkt, dis rebellie, dis opstand tegen God, want jij verneder niet onder zijn woord niet. Jij raakt niet zachtmoedig en liefdevol en vredevol niet. En niet om daar aan te denken dat um, uh, Nimrod was hier die vechter geweest. So hij die omgegeven wat voor hem komt. Hij heeft die omgegeven wat een Godse koninkrijk aangaan. Want hij wil hier die naam mee als baas vechter. Hij is hier die man. En um, dit is al plaats in mijn hart gepraat om net gisteren aan te denken: Jere, hier die geaardheid moet val. Ja. Jij moet eerst denken aan vecht nie. Ja. Nou, let ons lees Jesus hier in Ecclesiastes 8, uh, verses 11 en 12. Ecclesiastes 8, verses 11 en 12. Um, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of, man, of men is fully set in them to do evil. Thou a sinner does evil, a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. So here we see how the word of God says it, it takes a long time for execution on a wrong deed, an evil work, to eventually uh, um, come become visible, eventually to be exercised out. And therefore we Keep on taking chances. And here he's also talking about the, the sinner, the evildoer. He is doing a hundred times wrong and still his days are prolonged. But when, as long as our days are prolonged on earth, we must see it as a time to repent. Kom ons lees hier in Prediker 8 vers 10. So het ek dan die goede lees, loos ek sien begrawe word en die ris... Ja, vers 11. 11, vers 11 en 12. Ja. Omdat die oordeel door een verkeerde daad nie gauw voltrek word nie. Daarom is die hart van die mensekinders in hulle vol om kwaad te doen. So, God, baie keer vir het lang. So, vir, voordat jy sien, hoe die maar God het ingegryp. So, jy voel daar het aangenee, wat is ok, en jy gaan aan. Aangezien is sonder honderdmaal kwaad doen, en hy lang lewe, Dit voel ons van so echt, die sonder doen het, so ek kan het ook doen. Alhoewel ek weet dat het goed sal gaan met die wat God vrees, omdat hulle voor sy aangezicht vrees. En dit nie goed sal gaan nee, nee, met... Nee, nee, nee. Oké, okay, yes. So baie keer vat het lang vir een saak om voltrek te word. Yes. Um, God vat baie keer lang, is lang moedig oor ons geval, want hy wil jou bekering skenk. En dan voel ons nie wat ons kan aangaan. Yes. Is oké. Okay. Now on the other hand, on the flip side of the coin as I say, Unity in God's kingdom is paramount. Paramount. Now, uh, in God's kingdom, unity is extremely important. Okay? Now, what is the unity in God's kingdom? And that differs from the unity that we have read in Bible. And now we, uh, from here on, we would be able to understand why God made the vision in Bible, but still in His kingdom, there is unity. And uh, we were just thinking, maybe we're going to talk about it a little bit later. As new nations developed, obviously those nations and races became one. Yeah. And in their, in their oneness, there's also division. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it a little bit later on that as well. Now, what is unity in God's uh, uh, um, kingdom? Now, when we, when we most of the time think of unity, we think it of in a carnal, on a carnal plane, on a carnal, on a visible level. That is like family unity, race unity, nation unity, culture unity, heritage unity, etc. So most of the time when we think unity, even as born again Christians, we don't think unity in the body of Christ. We yeah. think unity with my carnal family, works colleagues, nation, race, etc. Okay. Now, a nation can consist, a physical nation like South Africa can consist of different cultures, religions, and it's because of this diversities that there will be no fundamental unity. Because the physical diversities are there, there can never ever be real unity. Now, God created a soul as well as the earthly body. And this we must understand as well. So, God gave you a body and a soul. He connected your soul to a specific body, language, race, nation, etc. Okay. The earthly and visible will be destroyed and will come to an end. All this outward appearance will come to an end. Now, this teach us that it is the, not the most important, although we value the outside, the visible, more important than the spiritual. 
Now this we can read in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 to 18. Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, Jochen, sometimes we yeah. think it's the end of the world if we're in some <laughs> affliction or trouble yes. or tribulation, which is but for a moment, but it continues oh. on days and months and it years, is. but it's for a moment, <laughs> is working for us a far more exceeding and external weight of glory. So that must work in us so that something can happen, that we can start to understand something. Even in the confusion of Babel, humanity, the people had to understand something. Maybe a few understood, but the majority never understood what was the real meaning of that confusion. Now, while we, this is now verse eight, uh, 18, while we do not look <coughs> at the things which are seen, so we are not supposed to look at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And when we lose heart, we become despondent, we even become depressed, when we look at our and other people's outside visible appearances. So, eenheid in Godse Koninkryk is uiterst belangrijk. Nou, wat sê eenheid is dit? Nou, wanneer ons aan eenheid denk, dan denk ons aan vleeslike eenheid. Ons denk om op hierdie vlak, met ons familie, in ons rasse, in ons nasies, in ons kultuur, herkomst, hier moet ons eenheid bereik. Nou, daar is my so spreekwoord wat sê eenheid maak, Mag. Eendrag maak mag. Ach, yes. En dit is wat ons altyd raak sien. Ons en bloed sien altyd, is dikker as water. Ja, so ons, ons is altyd bezig met hierdie vleeslike eenheid wat moet plaas. Want jy voel, jy moet een raak met jou familie. Jy moet in jou ras, in jou nasie, in jou kultuur, in jou herkomst, moet jy hierdie eenheid bereik. Nou, een nasie bestaan uit, selfs een nasie, bestaan uit sekere kultuure, rasse, godsdienst, ach, um, kultuure en godsdienst, en as gevolg daarvan, sal daar nooit fundamentele eenheid bereik word nie. Want onthou net, in, in een ras, in een, in een nasie, is daar ook verdeeldheid. En het sal so wees, want daar is verskillende godsdienste, daar is verskillende um, gewoontes en dinge in een volk. So, daar kan onmoendlik in die vlees daai eenheid bereik word nie. En God het het in elk geval so beplan. Dit is ook om hy hierdie verwarring gebring het, want daar moet nie daai eenheid ooit, ooit, ooit wees nie. Nou God het die siel so wel as die lichaam gemaakt. Nou die vleeslik en sigbare sal vergaan en op einde kom. Nou ons hecht soveel waarde aan hierdie lichaam, hierdie aarde, hierdie eenheid wat ons hier met mekaar moet hee, dat ons nie altyd verstaan wat die woord sê nie. Nou kom ons lees hier so in 2 Korintiërs 4 vers 16 tot 18. Daarom gee ons nie moed op nie, maar al vergaan ons uiterlijke mens ook. Nogtans word die innerlijke mens dag na dag vernieuwe, want ons lichte verdrukking, wat vir een oomlik is, verwerk vir ons alles oortreffende eeuwige gewig van heerlijkheid. Jo, en waai keer denk ons hierdie verdrukking wat ons hier ervaar is enorm, en hy sê die lichte verdrukking wat vir een oomlik is, maar dan sê jy, jyre, ek gaan al jyre en jyre en jyre hier deur, maar God sien dit as een oomlik, want hierdie ou lewekie op aarde is soos, pjoe, soos een dampie. Wa, um, omdat ons nie let op die sigbare dinge nie, maar op die onsigbare, want die sigbare dinge is tydelik, maar die onsigbare ewig. So nou kom ons hier na punt toe. Dit gaan nie hier oor een vleeslike eenheid nie, maar wel een eenheid in Godse Koninkrijk. I actually want to talk about here, yeah, um, and it's not primarily, we, we've spoken about it, but yes. let's talk about it quickly. As long as there as we stay in the flesh, the vision, the fleshly divisions, yeah. and differences and diversities will create a division. Yeah, good. Okay. When you are in God's kingdom, when you are spiritually reborn, in God's kingdom, if you look spiritually, yeah. not if you are born again and still look carnally. Yes. If you are born again and you look spiritually, there's no race, there's no difference in religion because there's supposed to be one God, one Jesus, one Holy Spirit, one conviction, yes. one everything. So in God's kingdom, there is no race, no difference in language, yeah. no difference in anything. 
But if we as children of God still as fix our eyes on the natural, even amongst ourselves and in at the churches that we are, there will be divisions, the there will be wars and problems within our lives. Ja, so ons as weer, weer geboren kinders van die Heere, het nie weer stam, ras, nasi, tal, gewoontes, kultuur, wat ook af op hierdie aarde nie. Want ons het deurgebreek geestelik. Nou, wanneer jy tot wedergeboorte gekom het, en jy bly vleeslik kyk, jy bly vleeslik oordeel, gaan daar hierdie verdeeldheid wees. Jy gaan altag en altyd die verdeeldheid wees. Want jy kan nie volgens dit leven nie. Nou, God in sy koninkryk, daar is geen verdeeldheid in Godse koninkryk nie. Daar is ons die selfde, ons is daar in die eenheid, ons denk daar die selfde, ons dien die selfde God, ons het die selfde heilige geest en al die type van dinge. Maar wanneer die mens vleeslik en eenheid wil bereik, dan gaan daar altyd, en dit moet so wees, die verdeeldheid wees, want God het het by die toren van Babel laat plaas vind, so ons kan dit nie verander nie, dit gaan so wees, dit moet so wees, maar geestelik, wanneer jy tot wedergeboorte kom, dan besef jy, Heere, ek is weergebore, ek is niet gebore uit hierdie koninkryk van duisternis uit, hierdie aarde wat my so vast hou, en wat ek die eenheid wil bereik, dan besef vir mens nie, ek is nie meer deel daarvan nie. Yeah, and the thing is, God wants to to, to, to deliver us even from our culture. Yeah. Now, what is interesting, we had a very, very interesting um, phone call with Anshin this week. And we had this similar phone of, uh, discussion with Anshin a lot of times. Because she is open, she doesn't care, she just wants to get, she wants to be a new person. Yeah. And she sees things for what they are. So, we we're going to say something in our uh, that we've discussed in this conversation now we are white people and ancient according to them they say it's not it's not blasphemy uh, to say that they are colors could they call themselves colored people or brown people okay so we, so we talk we talk to each other like that yeah. and she says we as brown people i say i am i am as, as white people so we don't discriminate against each other yes. but there is certain cultural differences now in the lord we must become one if this uh, we speak the same language the africans we africans they in south africa we in south africa but they are cultural differences but what is interesting as we the the, the discussion developed we realize doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, what culture you are. Because within, even in a white community in South Africa, even there is different cultures within white people in South Africa. Yeah. And we are one country yes. speaking the same language. Okay. So God works exactly the same with her as we are talking, with her as with us yes. to get us out of this heritage culture thing that we are bound by by you are white you're speaking afrikaans you must have a certain culture god doesn't care about my culture and my my skin color because he gave it to me and even my language and even my family and the sin is exactly the same in all cultures yes. heartache brokenness destruction um we've spoken of so many things she said she desires this. And they said we also desire that. And we realize we're two different cultures. We grew up in two different parts of South Africa. And we desire the same. The sin were the same. The, the temptations were the same. Exactly. And God wants to take us out of our sinful culture. And also take her out of her sinful culture. Which is the sin, the devil. And not the physical skin color. <laughs> ja, so dit was nou baie cool, ons het met Angie een gesprek gehad op die phone, en ek denk het het ons en haar baie losgemaak. Ja, yeah, <laughs> I see, see, see. So is ons steeds opgewonde oor hierdie kool. Nou, um, wat ons daar gesels het, is dat, um, sy is van die bruin mense, ons is nou wit mense, so ons praat so met mekaar, bruin mense, wit mense, zwart mense, wat ook al, en ons praat so lekker daar oor, want in die bediening besef een mens, dat, um, 
Het maakt niet zo wat ze kleer, nazi, taal, cultuur, wat ook al je is niet. Ons gaan hier diezelfde dingen. God dit wat niet een zaak met ons cultuur nie, of jij nou bruin of je wit is en of je wat ze kleer is. God haal die cultuur uit jou uit. Hij haal die gewoontes uit jou uit. Die zonde, die ongerechtigheid. God haal dit uit jou uit. Nou, wij keer dan denk ons maar, dit gaan beter in een ander nazi. Dit gaan beter in een ander ras, as met ons ras of ons nasie. En toe ons so gesels, toe besef ons maar, dit gaan oor ons die selfde. Die wit mens word verkracht en gemolesteer, die bruin mens word verkracht en gemolesteer, die zwart mens word verkracht en gemolesteer, en allemaal het die selfde pijn, die selfde seer, die selfde vroeginge, die selfde verwerping, al die type van dinge, die een word, um, die maak jy saak wat er taal en nasie is, en jy word verwerpt ook, of jy word slecht behandel, of jy word gebully, yes. of wat ook al die geval mag wees, maar die seer, die innerlijke pijn, wat die mens ervaar, is precies exactly die selfde. So, daar is geen verskil nie, al wat die verskil kom maak het, is dat God de verwarring in die taal en in die DNA van die mens gebring het, so dat ons skatter, yes. so dat ons daar verdeeldheid moet kom in die vlees, yes. maar geestelik ervaar ons precies diezelfde. Yes. Nou, as God ons kom verloos en ons kom vrymaak en ons kom tot wedergeboorte, dan werk hy met ons precies diezelfde. want die seer wat in amal is, alle rasse kultuere, volke, nazies, tale, is precies diezelfde wat met uitgesorteer word, die gewoontes, die sonde, die ongerechtigheid, dit wat ons verloos moet word, die uiterlijke sonde, niks verskil nie, Yes. Alles blijft precies diezelfde. Ja, yeah, Satan tempted, tempts every, every race, every nation exactly the same. The hurt that is in people, doesn't matter, and we've spoken across racial uh, 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 divisions, to black, to brown, to, to Indian, to, doesn't matter, to white people, to everybody. The hurt and the questions and the longings is exactly, Amen. exactly the same. So that's why in our ministry we we cannot we cannot and, and this is the thing years ago when when I when when, when, when the ministry started and uh, we came off the streets of street evangelism etc. I realized one day I realized one thing the gospel that I preach to the person to the to the boomer the tramp on the street I must preach to the king in the castle. Yes. I must preach it to every single race and nation. Doesn't matter where you are. If I cannot preach the same gospel to everybody, I'm not busy with the gospel of Jesus okay, Christ. So. And there, therefore, the gospel that we preach, and sometimes my wife and myself say, how can we reach even more and even other ethnic groups and so on? But then we realize when we minister the gospel, even when God starts working in you, doesn't matter what your race and your color and whatever it is, God works exactly the same oh, to man. get that culture out of that sin out of your yes, life and, that, and to heal that hurt in the same way. Ja, en hy sit pressure op een mens, hy sit daar verdrukking, so dat een mens moet verander, en het maak nie saak wie jy is en wat jy is nie, en Godse Koninkrijk is daar nie partijdigheid nie, hy werk met elke persoon precies dieselfde, as jou hart opraag is en jy geer dit vir jyre, gaan hy met jou werk, en ek sien nou so mooi die boere sê nou vir ons dat, ons met een godelike geslag voorbring, en het is so, en Godse Koninkrijk is daar nie verdeeldheid nie, en Godse Koninkrijk is daar, um, praat ons die selfde taal, ons praat die selfde woorde, ons verstaan precies wat ons sê as Anshin praat en as ek praat en as Rohaida praat of wie ook al praat ons praat precies diezelfde taal want ons gaan precies dier die ding God werk op precies diezelfde manier om die kultuur van die wit mens om die kultuur van die brei mens wat ook al uit te haal want dit kan God nie behaag nie want dis een eenheid in die vlees yes and as long as we are staying as long as we are gonna look at our visible at our visible race and culture, even in the gospel, there's going to be divisions. Yeah. And we must pass that. Yes. Thank you for your comment, Anshin. That is really a blessing. Dit, dit maak ons harte verskrikkelijk opgewonde volgende, yes. want dit is wat ons besef, jyre, daar moet, dit moet oopkom, want ons allemaal moet vrykom. Yes. Ons kan dit nie meer so toehou en verberg en niemand weet eindelijk waar hulle staan nie. Yeah. Want geestelik, moet ons in die eenheid kom, geestelik moet ons mekaar lief hee, geestelik moet ons mekaar dra, yes. en ons met mekaar um, opbouw en stig, so dat allemaal geneesing kan kry. Yes, so the problem with carnal unity is that the visible or the natural will always cause division, even in our, 
Because sometimes we as Christians, we are also still carnal. Then in a carnal way, we try to establish unity. And that's not going to work. Yes. Now, humanity tries to overcome uh, it in different ways. Now we're talking about uh, humanity in general, for us as children of God to understand something. So we just use it as an example. Now, still differences will always call the, cause division. doesn't matter how hard you try <laughs> and how laws are being forced uh, down to create unity. Of course, this is now most a buzzword, unity amongst diversity. Mm. As long as we stay in the flesh and and, and we acknowledge that there is diversity. There can never be unity. Isn't it so? Mm. Now, unity in a carnal way without God is impossible. I think we've established this so far. Now, the only unity amongst carnality, those that are carnal, those that are fleshly, are aimed at, at God's spiritual unity of spirit and truth. So, even if there's in the carnal world, in the fleshy world, divisions. If they stand together, the only time that they stand together is to stand together, together against God's spiritual sure. unity. And that is a rebellious attitude that always wants to prove God wrong like Nimrod. We can create also this kingdom and this unity for ourselves. It's a rebellion against God's word. Amen. Now, the more we, the, the more humanity tries to prove God wrong, the more divisions, wars, personally and in the world, are there. We can see it. People are trying to create a unity on a fleshly plane, but as long as there are diversities. There can never be a unity because that is not from God. Because humanity wants to create a carnal unity. Now the problem with fleshly unity is that the sichtbar of natuurlijk altijd verdeeldheid zal bring. Altijd, altijd, altijd. Dit zal altijd verdeeldheid bring. Um, die mens dan probeer het oorbrug op verschillende maniere. As ons nou kyk na die landswette en al die dinge, op verschillende maniere wil mense dit probeer oorbrug. Maar daar sal altyd verdeeldheid wees. Maak nie saak hoe hard daar probeer het, hoeveel wette daar afgeforseer word en so aan in die diversiteit nie. Dit sal net nooit kan um, verander nie. Nou omdat diversiteit herken word, sal daar nooit eenheid wees soos wat die mense dit verlang nie. Eenheid sonder God is onmoendlik. En dit wil ons vandag uitdra. Yes. Dit gaan nie vandag oor een politieke saak nie. Yes. Dit gaan vandag om te besef, jyre, ons as mens op aarde moet jy anneem, dan sal die verdeeldheid nie meer al wees. Want even in jou eie nasie, yes. even in jou eie ras, gaan jy die verdeeldheid ervaar. Gaan jy yes. ervaar, maar jy word nie aanvaar nie, of jy kruiseer, of wat ook al die geval mag wees. Want dit moet so wees, want eerheid kan nie sonder God wees nie. En die mens wil vir God wees, in sy rebelse houding, soos wat Nimrod vir God wil wees in sy rebelse houding, dat ons gaan hier die eenheid vorm sonder jy. Ons gaan hier die volk wees, sonder jy, met, met die selfde woorde, met die selfde taal. <laughs> dit is al vir my nogal amazing, amazing geweest, dat ek yeah. lees van die selfde woorde. So dit is even die selfde uitdrukkings, dit is die selfde manier. So dit is hoe um, die mens op aarde dit wil probeer recht krijg. Maar hoe meer hulle dit wil doen, hoe meer kom na verdeeldheid. Want God wees vir ons dat dit kan nie gebeur nie. Nou, wat die mens het probeer verkeerd bewys in Godse Koninkrijk, is daar alle meer oorloe in jou persoonlijke leven. Die woord sê so mooi, hy sê jou, waar vandaan kom al die oorloe <laughs> en vechterreie? Toe ek net as hy daan denk dat... Um, Nimrod was hier die vechter gewees en het in die, in die oorlog was in sy hart gewees. So waar vandaan kom dit van die innerlijke af? Dit gaan nie oor in waterstam naas die volk en taal jy is nie. Dit gaan oor een hartskondisie. En dit is hoe kom dit aanhou. Yes. Now when we look um, in God's kingdom, there is no partial, partiality or divisions in God's kingdom when he wants to accept you and when you serve him. So in God's kingdom, if you are spiritually in accepting you and serving him, there are absolutely no partiality and divisions. Yes. All are the same, even between man and woman. Now let us just read three scriptures quickly so to confirm this. Romans 10, 12. For there is no distinction between laws, between Jews and Greek, for the same Lord over uh, this, the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon all. So Romans 10, 12 says, No distinction, no Jew, no Greek. 
Romans 3, 22 to 23. Romans 3, 22 to 23. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference for all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So all who have sinned, if you are a Jew, if you are a Greek, doesn't matter where in the world is, if you are sinned, you fall short of the glory of God. Yes. Okay. And there is no nation and race on the entire world. And even in this context, if you're going to read Romans 3, he's talking about even the Jews doesn't have privilege uh, above every other in, uh, nation in the world. So they don't have a special privilege above us. They must accept the Lord. They have sinned. They must accept the Lord. They must repent. And so they will be saved. So let us read Colossians 3, 10 verses 11. And have put on uh, Colossians 3, 10, 11. 10 to 11, <laughs> and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and all in one. So Christ is one, is one, and we must be that generation. Um, Josh, I will not have a question, as you have a comment, it on my WhatsApp. Well, I will go to my house. Well, so you can go and look. Okay. So daar is geen partijskap en verdeeldheid in Godse Koninkryk nie. Dit is net soos amazing, he. Um, dit, daar is die partijskap om jou aan te neem nie en ook nie om om te dien nie. So, niks in Godse Koninkryk word in partijskap gedoen nie. Yes. Elke een wat om aanroep, wat om soek, wat sy hart oopmaak en oopbreek, elke een word aangeneem. Dit is net soos amazing. En God het ook nie een voorkeer wie om die nie. <laughs> jy mag om die, jy mag om aan bed. As jy sy kind is, is daar geen, geen partijskap nie. Dit is net so super cool om na aan te denk. Nou, ons lees in Romeine 10 vers 12, want daar is geen onderscheid tussen Jood en Griek nie. Die selfde Heere toch is Heere van Amal en is rijk oor Amal wat om aanroep. So daar is geen onderscheid wat de rastal, nasie, volk, wat ever jy is nie, as jy God en oprechtheid aanroep en jy wil om dien, gaan die Heere jou aanvaar. Dis net soos amazing. Nou kom ons lees in Romeine 3 vers 22 tot 23. Die gerechtigheid, namelijk van God dier die geloof in Jesus Christus vir amal en oor amal wat geloo, want daar is geen onderscheid nie. Want amal het gesondag en het ontbreek hulle aan die heerlijkheid van God. So daar is geen onderscheid in Godse Koninkrijk nie. Um, Colossense 3 vers 10 tot 11 en jylle Jol met, nieuwe mens, uh, met die nieuwe mens beklee, het wat vernieuwe word door die kennis naar die beeld van sy skepper. So ons verander naar die beeld van ons skepper. skepper. Wanneer ons die Heere Jesus Christus aanneem in die wedergeboorte en ons ontvang die geest van God, dan word ons verander naar die beeld van ons skepper. So dis nie hierdie aardse lichaampie wat in die beeld van God is nie. Ons krijg nie naam. En ons krijg een nieuwe naam. Wow, <laughs> dit is so cool. Dan het ons een naam. Yes, dan het ons een nieuwe naam. Dan word ons in Godse Koninkrijk aanvaar as sy kind. Nou in Colossense 3 vers 11, waar daar nie Griek en Jood, besnede en onbesnede, barbaar, skief, slaaf, vryman is nie, maar God is... Ah nee, Christus. Maar Christus is amal en in amal. Is alles en in amal. Yes, ek raak so opgewonde, dat ek so die woorde kan sê nie. Want as ons die Heere Jesus Christus aanneem, dan is ons in die beeld van God. Want anders is, weet ons nie, is die Heere nou wit, swart, pink, paars, wat is hy? Manlik, vrouwlik, mooi, lelik, langhaare, korthaare, blond, bruin, wat, wat? Nee, ons siel, ons innerlijke wat gered word, wat die geest van God ontvang, word verander na die beeld beeld van God. Ja, yeah, it's interesting, Josh, on, on our group, he, he, he placed the scripture, Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19, you can read it in your own time, Proverbs 6, from 16 to 19, the one verse that he, uh, uh, um, left out, left out, he that, uh, he that something, the score, the vision amongst brethren, so there's six things that God hate, and the seventh thing, Yo. and he that soweth discord amongst brethren. Yo. So if we use our outward, yes. visible, sure. to cause division amongst the brethren, God yes. hates it. Yeah, but us is one and us is one lichaam, and Christus is ons hoof. Yes. So as ons ons kultuur en al die dinge gebruik om verdeeldheid te bring in die broederskap, 
Yes. Sit ons met een machtige probleem. So as jy sê ek is van hierdie volk en nasie en taal en dit en dat en dat en ek is beter as jy en wat wat wat, dan breng jy verdeeldheid in die broederskap van God. And obviously if we are still carnal, we have carnal religious beliefs as well. And that also sows immense um, division within the Christian world. Yes. Now, let us continue. I wanted to read that as if it's the Bible. <laughs> now, the thing is, all who have sinned, and this is what we've just read, all who have sinned will be cast in the lake of fire. And there will be no partiality, no distinction in race, language, sure. class, age, regardless. And Satan forces his sin on you. It doesn't matter what race, language, class, or age you are. He forces his sin on you. And let us just read two scriptures here in Revelation. Revelations 13 verses 7. I don't want to uh, um, uh, elaborate on the beast, etc. I just want to lift out a, a certain aspects here. Uh, it was granted to him to make war for the, with the saints and to overcome them. So this is the beast, make war against the saints and overcome them. We are in this beastly world. You must pay your rent every month. You must work. You must pay your taxes. That's how the beast has got power over you. Okay. And to overcome us, we must pay our rent. Otherwise, you'll be kicked out of your house. If you're Christian or not. Okay. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. So even this beast had authority over every tribe, tongue and a nation. Sure. No one is excluded. So that the temptation and the evil of the world is over every single one in the entire world. Okay. Verses 16 of Revelation 13. Uh, yeah. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and their forehead. So it's rich and poor, free and slave. Doesn't matter what class or level, if you are young or old, the devil enforces his sin and his rule on you. Now, Revelation 20 verses 12. And I saw the, the dead, small and great, standing before God and the books were open. So small and great will stand before God. But hmm. if you serve the Lord, and this is amazing. Let us read Revelation 19 verse 5. Revelation 19 verse 5. There's hope in Revelation. Because oh, yeah. the Bible yeah. says, if you read Revelation and you stand it, understand it, you will be happy. You will be glad. You will be joyful. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you, his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. Wow. So if you're serving, doesn't matter what you race, class, small or great, you <coughs> will be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. So elkeen wat gesondig het, sal in die poel van die vier gewerf word, en elkeen wat die Heere dien, sal daarvan gered word. So daar is nie onderscheid nie. Elkeen wat nie die Heere dien nie, gaan in die poel van die vier gewerf word. Elkeen wat die Heere dien, gaan aangeneem word. Nou geen rastal Klas, ouderdom is gevrijwaar van die sonde wat Satan op ons af forceer nie. Yes. Niemand is gevrijwaar daarvan nie. Ok, nou kom ons lees hier so in um, openbaring 13 vers 7. Dit is ook om gegee om oorlog te voer tegen die heiliges en hulle te oorwin en aan hom macht te gee oor elke stam, taal en nasie. So niemand is gevrijwaar nie. Niemand, niemand, niemand nie. Daar is nie onderscheid nie. Nou, kan ek ons lees in um, openbaring 13, 16. En hy maak dat allemaal klein en groot en die rijk is en die arm is en die vry mense en die slawe een merk op hulle rechterhand en op hulle voorhoofde gegee word. So, hy is daar om allemaal in die hande te kry. Daar is nie onderscheid in sy koninkrijk nie, net soos daar nie onderscheid is in Godse koninkrijk. Amen. That's amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Nou, in uh, openbaring 20 vers 12, en ek het in die door een klein en groot voor God sien staan, en die boeke is geopend, en een ander boek, die boek van die lewe is geopend, en die door is geoordeel, na wat in die boeke geskryf is, na hulle werke. Nee. Volgens hulle werke. Volgens hulle werke. So, amal, 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 gaan daar wees, amal gaan geoordeel wees. Nou, kom ons lees, en hoop, ek het al hierdie vers verwacht. <laughs> Openbaring 19 vers 5, en dit is die hoop wat ons het in die Heere. Wow, dit is amazing. En een stem het in die troon uitgegaan en gesê, prijs onze God, al sy dienstkrachte, en jylle wat om vrees, 
klein en groot. Is dit die amazing nie? Allemaal word en gesluit. Klein, groot, rijk, arm, maak nie staam saak, wat sy staam naas, volk, volk en kultuur jy is nie, jy kan gered word. Nou, dit is so mooi, hier lees ons, dat elkeen wat die Heere dien, en vol hart door die einde toe, sal gered word. Yes. God gaan jy die weg wees, omdat jy in ander tal, ras of nasie is nie. Wow! So, now, the thing is, Jesus came. Now, when we think of Nimrod, when you think of the Tower of Babel, God came to bring division, because they created a carnal, sinful, rebellious unity. Now, it was amazing, as my, uh, my wife has, uh, has emphasized it, let us go down to the people. They, God did everything through Jesus Christ. Yes. Let us create man in our image. God through Jesus Christ, and that was the us in the beginning. Okay? So God and Jesus was all, were always there, and they did everything also through the Spirit of God as well. Okay, this we can all read in the New Testament. All right. Now, as humanity develops, and as we said in the beginning, humanity always are busy with their own thing, and they want to force their own thing down and without God's Spirit. Now, this is, now we see in the New Testament, now Jesus Christ all of a sudden comes, first of all, uh, in certain instances he's talking about brotherly love and unity but then he makes a very interesting remark and let us read here Luke 12 verses 49 to 53 Luke 12 verses 49 to 53 I came to send fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled this is Jesus word he came to send fire on the earth now verse mm -hmm. 51 do you suppose that I came to bring peace on earth? <laughs> I tell you, not at all, but rather the vision. Yes. Now, did God speak against his own word when he says he hate the vision amongst brethren? Okay. For from now on, five in one house will be divided. Three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. So it's nothing strange if there is that divisions in your family. <laughs> Why did Jesus Christ came to bring division? That the division Jesus Christ brought was to destroy the unity of evil manifested through carnality. That is why. Because if your family are still sinful or in a false or wrong religion, busy, busy with carnal religion, then the word of God that you hear will bring the vision because there cannot be unity amongst spirit and carnality, the flesh. Yes. The word of God comes and brings the vision. Because families are gathered as one. And they say family is the most important, etc., etc. But even in families, there are divisions. But if you serve the Lord, that division comes in to a moment. Yeah? Come to an end. Yeah, that, that will come to an end. So the division the there between you that serve the Lord and your carnal family and friends will be there because the word brings it, Jesus Christ's word. And he said, I wish that it already will start. Because sure. God are there to destroy carnal unity once and for all. Mm. So that we can be a spiritual. Now what do we do we as children of God? We keep attached to the physical. Yeah. And that is where we get hurt and we don't grow spiritually and uh, because God doesn't confirm a fleshly unity and tradition, race, etc. Sure. Maybe you can talk to that point. Okay. Jesus het ook aarde toe gekom om verdeeldheid te bring. En ons het ons in so mooi gelees dat ons het gekom om die, om die taal te verwaar. Nee? So Jesus en God was betrokken. En Jesus kom weer aarde toe om verdeeldheid te bring. <laughs> so dit is het amazing om daar aan te denk. Ons denk baie keer dat dit iets anders wat Jesus vir ons kom doen het. Maar onthou net, wanneer jy een vleeslike kind van die Heere wil wees, gaan jij een verdeeldheid wees met een geestelijke kind van hier. Yes. Daar gaan altijd die verdeeldheid wees. In een gezin, in een familie, in een volk, in een taal, in een nasie. Als iemand die hier in geest en waarheid dien, 
en die ander een is vleeslik, gaan daar verdeeldheid wees, en dit moet so wees, want Jesus het gekom om dit wel te kom doen. Yes. Hy het nie gekom om vrede te breng tussen vlees en gees nie, hy het gekom om een verdeeldheid te breng tussen vlees en gees. Nou kom ons lees hier in Lukas 12 vers 49, ek het gekom om die aarde um, ek het gekom om vier op die aarde te werp, en hoe wens ek dat het al aangesteek was. Maar ek het te doop om meer gedoop te word, en hoe benauwd word ek totdat dit volbring is. Denk jylle ek het gekom om vrede op die aarde te gee? Nee, sê ek vir jylle, maar eerder verdeeldheid. Want van nou sal daar vijf in een huis verdeeld wees, drie teen twee en twee teen drie, die vader sal verdeeld, verdeeld wees teen die seen en die seen teen die vader, die moeder teen die dochter en die dochter teen die moeder, die skoonmoeder teen haar skoondochter en die skoondochter teen haar skoonmoeder. So die, um, Jesus het gekom om die verdeeldheid te bring op aarde, daar kan nie die bose eenheid van die vlees op aarde wees nie, daar gaan altyd verdeeldheid wees. Eerst is in families nie. Daar kan nie. Ja, as jy die Heere dien, en jou familie dien nie die Heere nie, gaan daar verdeeldheid wees, en het moet so wees. Baie keer wil ons daar oor heil, baie keer voel ons dus onrechtvaardig, baie keer het ons een probleem daarmee, en ons verkwalik God daar oor. Onthou net, hy het gekom, om verdeeldheid te bring, tussen vlees en gees. Ja, yeah, and if, if we want to force a physical um, unity, and when you hear ministry like this, and you see the scripture, we as children of God sometimes becomes in become rebellious. Yeah. Say, but I will love my. The Bible says I must love my neighbor. <laughs> I must. Ma- but your brother is also your neighbor. Yes. And he says the brotherly neighborly love must be there first before we can reach out to others. Yeah. We don't even have brotherly neighborly love because <laughs> your brother is your first neighbor. Spiritually, it's your very first neighbor and you must love your neighbor you must love your brother if that develops then you will see clearly what your love will be towards the rest of the world yes so dit begin by broeder liefde daar moet die verdeeldheid wees en dit is gewoonlik wat verdeeldheid is <laughs> en dit is wat ons moet uitsorteer want ons is so gerig daarop en dit is hierdie rebellie in ons leven ons hoor baie keer mense sê ek sal Ek sal verdaaien en ek sal verdaaien. En dis een rebellie in jou hart, want is die in Godse woord. Want dan net, al voel jy God stem jou saak toe, as dit nie die woord staan, die stem God toe jou saak toe nie, dan kan jy maak wat jy wil, dis een rebellie in jou hart. Nou, Werner sê so mooi, hy het hier geleer, dat ons mense moet sien as die siel wat gered moet word. Yes. En het is so. Ons kan nie die wereld haat nie. Gaat nie, jy moet jou vijand lief hee. Yes. En jy moet altyd uitreik met die woord, jy moet altyd uitreik met die evangelie. Jy moet paraat wees om die evangelie te bring, so dat siele gered kan dis, word. Dis ware liefde. Dis liefde, om die waarheid aan iemand te vertel, so dat hy yes. gered kan word. Maar vleeslik, gaan jy nie een band met iemand kan hee, wat nie die heren dien. Ja, yeah, cause we see love only as giving out physical things. We must love your, you must love your enemy so much, that you will equip yourself to go and minister the gospel to him. That yeah. is the primary purpose of love. That's what God said to the rich man. Go and sell everything. I love you so much. I <laughs> want you in the kingdom of God, but your possessions are making a division. Yes. And you must get rid of that division. You must get rid of that divide. So I love you so much. I preach the truth to you. Yeah. And when we will preach the truth to our uh, um, family, they will keep a further distance from us. They will distance from you, not you from them. Ja, dit is nie jy wat die, wat die verdeeldheid bring nie. Dit is die woord wat jy bedien, yes. wat maak dat al scheiding kom. Of die persoon neem die woord aan, en hy is in eenheid met jou, geestelike eenheid, of hy gaan jou vir my en hy gaan een verdeeldheid kom. Want vlees en geest kan nie saam opreid nie. Yes. Now it's quite interesting, even if you speak the same language, as someone else. Okay, you are saved, the other person is not saved. You speak, as, let's say Afrikaans or English. Both speak English. But if it comes to spiritual things, the one who's speaking spiritual things, the person who doesn't have the Spirit of God in her life or his life won't understand what you're saying, isn't yeah. it so? <laughs> so there is a spiritual division. Yeah. There's a f- spiritual Bible. <laughs> Verwarring. <Yeah. laughs> now, when we are born again, we become aliens and strangers in this world. We don't belong to a specific race or culture, ethnic group anymore. But if we stay 
carnal, the diversity of this world, our visible diversities will still rule over us and cause division in our Christian life. So I'll praat ons as kinders van die Heere, dalk het jy broers en sisters in jou familie, en jylle praat precies die selfde taal, Afrikaans, Engels, maak die saak, wat sy taal het is nie. Um, gaan jy hoor, as mense geestelik praat, daar is een probleem in die taal, dis nie die selfde woorde nie, dis nie die selfde uitdrukkings nie, dis nie die selfde verstaan nie, so dan klink het of jy twee verskillende taal het praat, het jy dit al gehoor? Yeah. En baie keer as kinders van die Heere afvallig raak, Yes. en hulle raak vleeslik, yes. byvoorbeeld kom ons sê hulle wil hulle die wet blij, en hulle wil die feest onderhou, en hulle wil geestelike oorlogvoering voer, en hulle wil al die dinge blij doen, as hulle met jou praat, dan denk jy, wat sy taal praat hierdie mens, ek verstaan nie wat hy sê nie, want geestelik praat ons nie met die selfde taal nie, ons klanke verskil, yes. jy gaan nie mekaar kan verstaan nie, daar gaan een verdeeldheid wees, daar gaan een verwarring wees, yes. nou dit is baie keer wat ons hoor, tussen ons as kinders van die Heere, yes. jy gaan sommer hoor nie, hierdie ouwe verstaan die Bijbel nie lekker nie, hier is iets groot fout, so dan praat jy nie meer die selfde taal nie, nou, dit is die groot probleem, dat wanneer ons as kinders van die Heere, vleeslik bly onder een vleeslike godsdienst, en ons um, wil byvoorbeeld nog steeds, terwyl God die opdracht gegeet, dat die wet verby is met Jesus Christus, ons gaan nie meer die wet doen nie, ons gaan nou lewe in die, ge- in die wet van genade, yes. en jy voel man God, jy weet nie waarvan jy praat nie, ek sal nog steeds die feeste doen, ek sal nog steeds die sabbat onderhoud, en ek sal nog steeds die wet uitvoer, dan is jy in een rebellie met God, jy is opstandig yes. in die Heere, jou fondatie waarop jy yes. bou, soos wat Nimrod hierdie stede gebouw het, is uit rebellie, is uit opstand, yes. is uit vecht, want baie keer, en ek weet nie of jy dit al gesien het nie, dat die persoon wat vleeslik bly en die vleeslike godsdienst is in een geweldige gevecht met die een wat in die geest wandel. So daar is altyd die oorlog en strijd en gevecht. So dis die baas vechter, hy wil nou hier die vleeslike godsdienst wil hy nou uitvoer teen God sy opdracht. So dit is wat ons baie keer nie verstaan nie. As ons een vleeslike kind van die Heere bly of ons voel, man, ons moet hier geseend wees, God gaan ons hier seend en jy lewe volgens dit en jy druk dit af op aan die mense dan is jy in een rebellie tegen Godse woord, want is nie wat God sê nie. Hmm. Now, um, when we read, uh, read in Colossians, we're going to jump, because I think we've yeah. spoken all those words. Let's read in Colossians 2 verses 20 to 23. That confirms that if we continue in a willful own mindset, way conduct our religion. We are as Nimrod. We want to establish a spirit spiritual rebellious city and they are in the spiritual world a spiritual rebellious city and yeah. God even in the Bible it says to us he's going to bring the vision and the division is already there but That's let right. us read Colossians 2 verses 20 to 23 therefore if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world sure. why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to the regulations do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. This is only a few examples. Yeah. Jesus mentioned a lot of examples. Paul wrote about a lot of examples. This is a few pointers. Which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments of the doctrine of men. And what we have read, read everything that are visible will perish. And he says all visible things will perish. So why we are we still subject under it? And we are, while we are still subjected under a physical, visible things and things that I must wave a flag or use a prayer shawl or blow a horn, an uh, uh, animal horn, a uh, shofar. That is physical things. And if I'm going to submit under that and think that has got spiritual power, then the visions will be there. First of all, there will be a division between you and God as well. Because yes. God doesn't agree with the carnal in our lives. Now let's vers- read verses 23. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom. It's appearance yeah. of wisdom. In self-imposed, that self-imposed is self-willed or headstrong religion. False humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So a physical religion won't help you to break out of the, phys- of the sin and strife and things that are in you are the desires, the, the, the wrongdoing, the indulgence of the flesh. The, 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 this outward religion won't give you victory over that. Sure. 
Konsesie so in Kolosse 1, 2, 20 tot 23. As jy dan saam met Christus die eerste beginsels van die wereld afgesterf het, waarom is jy asof jy nog in die wereld lewe, onderworpen aan inzettinge? Soos raak nie, smaak nie, roer nie, aan nie. Soos in die wereld. Soos in die wereld. Soos in die wereld. Um, Amal dinge wat jy die gebruik bestem is om te vergaan volgens die geboeie en leeringe van mense, wat alhoewel dit een skyn van wijsheid het, en eie sinnige godsdienst, en nederigheid en die gestrengheid in die lichaam, geen waarde het nie, maar het strek tot die versadiging van die vlees. So hier kan ons sien, wanneer jy nog bezig is met die vleeslike godsdienst, dit lyk soos nederigheid, dit lyk soos die skyn van wijsheid, maar dit is een eie sinnige godsdienst, dit is een rebelse godsdienst. Ons lees in een Samuel, dat hy sê jou eie sinnigheid is een um, Een geest van waarsheerheid, een geest van rebellie, een geest van opstand. En die onderstrewigheid is afgehoorde ding. Ja, so jy is bezig met dit, as jy teen Godse woord gaan, as God gesê die wet eindig in Jesus Christus, eindig die wet in Jesus Christus. Of jy nou wil maak en breek soos jy wil en besluit jy gaan dit onderhou, is jy in opstand met God en is jy bezig om jou stad in die rebellie te bou. Ja, and that is the big falling away that the Bible talks about is people falling from the spirit into the flesh. Now this is the, now, now Nimrod has built this city in rebellion. And we, if we are still forcing Old Testament elements, etc. over to the New Testament and certain things and certain things that we are doing in, a, maybe you are not doing the Jewish things, but you in other ways, and remember we must conduct our entire life according to the word of God. And anything that we willfully do against the word of God, we argue against it. We are in rebellion. Our city is in rebellion. And you will always be in rebellion against the truth. Yeah. And my wife and myself, we always get this. And the other day when I read in, 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 in the gospel again, they came to Jesus and said, the word of God says so, but what do you say? Mm -hmm. And we get it often. Yes, we know what the word of God says, but... In this situation, we must understand what a word of God is. It's holy, it's pure, it says what it says. Yeah. It doesn't say says more or less what it says. And we need to understand it. But our own hearts are sometimes still in rebellion. We're still in a carnal religion. And we, then we keep on arguing against the word of truth that God wants to impart in our life. Sure. So okay. wat gebeur, as jy in hierdie vleesike godsdienst bly, dan bly jy in opstand met God, jy bly in een rebellie met God, want ons moet verstaan, dat God verstaan net sy woord. God werk volgens sy woord. En as jy bijvoorbeeld iets in die woord um, toepas, wat nie daar moet wees nie, en jy sê, ja, maar jy verstaan nie my situasie nie, ek doen dit nou so en so, want dit is nou, God het in sy woord geskryf, hy het vir ons opdrachte gegeen, en wanneer die mens tegen dit gaan, dan bou jy jou stad in rebellie, jy bou jou geestelike leven in rebellie, en opstand tegen God, jy wil in een vleeslike eenheid kom, hier met mekaar, jy wil eindelijk hee, iemand moet met jou saamstem, in die vlees, so dat jy kan tegen God <laughs> gaan, jy wil hee, iemand moet vir jou sê, ja nee, dit is raag wat jy nou doen, ek kan dit nou so insien en so, en so jy kom dan hier in een vleeslike eenheid, maar jy is tegen God, want God wil jou hee in een geestelike eenheid, en wanneer die mens in die vleeslike eenheid bly, in die vleeslike um, evangelie, gaan jy altyd in opstand wees met die waarheid. Jy gaan altyd dat jy wil vech, jy gaan altyd dat jy wil opstaan. Ja, maar, jy verstaan nie, ja, maar, God sal nie, ja, maar, dit gaan nie so wees nie. Wanneer jy God in geest en in waarheid dien, gaan jy verstaan hoe om in die geestelike eenheid te kom met God, jy gaan weet, jy moet hierdie dinge klaar mee kry, Amen. en uitsorteer, en afsterf, en Amen. hierdie verwarring wat hier gekom het in jou in jou licht, in jou, in jou vleeslike wereld, as ek het so kan stel, God die raai verdeeldheid hier kom bring, God die raai verwarring hier kom bring, so dat jy hier kan uitbreek, want onthou nie, baie keer was jy nog nie geconfronteerd met dinge nie, nou eeuwenskielik word jy geconfronteerd met dinge in die woord van die Heere, en het voel vir jou soos die verwarring nou in jou geestelike leven, wat nou, wat moet ek nou doen? God veroorzaak dit, so dat jy hier kan uitbreek, so dat jy hom kan begin soek, en kan deel raak van die geestelike eenheid. Ja, yeah, cause we have the um, cliché in the Christian world, that says God gives way that we can differ. God mm -hmm. gives us to differ. We are allowed to differ. But let us read two scriptures. And there's some more, but let us, let us read these two scriptures. 
1 Corinthians 1 verses 1 to 10. That's it. And uh, if we are not joined in this unity, you will hear another Christian that says he's born again. If you hear him, he'll sound, but I can't understand his spiritual language. We're supposed to talk the same thing, but there's a vast difference. Let's see 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hmm. We must have the same mind, the same judgment, and perfectly joined. Let us read 2 Corinthians 13, 11. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell, become complete, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. So if there isn't one uh, um, conviction, if there isn't one judgment, if there isn't the same understanding, there will be divisions. But don't fret, if you accept the truth, you will grow in the truth. Yeah. But you get people that are always there just to argue. If you don't understand something, please ask. Yes. We invite you to ask. But a lot of people are stay in a rebellion. And that God has, has brought a, a division amongst a rebellion carnal city. Sure. Now, come um, on. We say always that God gives us room to differ. Now, come on. Let's read what says God in His Word. He says in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, But I command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be all one in the Word, and that there is no division among you, but that you are all one in the Word, in the same spirit, and in the same meaning. So we must have the same word. We must have the same understanding in the Word of the Lord. We must have the same uitdraw in the Word of the Lord. And this is what happens when people are in the flesh blij. Then you feel that, that you are not understand what that person is. They are not a good thing for my sin. Because we speak different. Because there is no room to be different. We must have all one of the sin Een van mening wees. Nou kom ons lees hier in 2 Korintiërs 13 vers 11. Vader, broeders, wees blij, word volmaak, laat het jylle vermaan, wees eensgesind, hou vrede, en die God van liefde en vrede sal met jylle wees. Now at the end of the day, and we just, we're not going to elaborate too much on this, at the end of the day, when we look at carnality and sin, the word of God says, and you can read it in your own time, in Revelation 16, verses 16 to 19, he says, And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Now, Armageddon is the war that will take place in the spiritual world with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've got an entire end time sermon that elaborates on all these points. So I'm not going to elaborate on it. So when we, when, we, when we look at Armageddon, it is a high place. It's a mountainous place. It's a place in the spiritual world. It's not on the earth. Because this place, Armageddon, doesn't exist on the earth. Okay? There's a world, the place Megiddon, but there's no place Armageddon. Okay? Let us read just verses 17, 18, and 19. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl in the air and with a loud voice, and said, come, uh, come out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. So this angel said, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as mighty and great earthquake, as had not occurred since men on earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And the great city was brought into remembrance before God to give her the cup of the wine of her fornication and the wrath of God. So when we see here uh, in Revelation 18 verses 4, the Bible tells us we as children of God must come out, under, uh, out from the Babylon. Who is Babylon? Babylon is, uh, is the entire worldly appearance system that oppresses the children of God, that oppresses the world. It's the riches and the wealth of this world. And even the children of God are called, caught under her. And God says, come out of under her. And we as children of God are caught up under this can canality. And we also think that the gospel is gained and it's outward appearance, etc. And while the word of God says that will come to an end. So all those who are carnal are gathered spiritually in one place called Armageddon. And God's going to destroy that at the end with his second coming. Sure. Yeah. Nou, kom ons kyk gegeis, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> na die skrif in openbaring 16 vers 16. 
Um, en hulle het hulle versamel op die plek wat in die breus genoem word Armageddon. En die zevende engel het sy skaal uitgegooi in die licht en een groot stem het uit die tempel van die jimmel gekom en het van die troon af gesê, dit is voorbij. So dit is met die wederkomst, nee. En daar het stemme gekom en donnersla en bliksemstrale en daar het een groot aardbeving gekom soos daar nog nie gewees het van die mens op aarde was en so geweldige groot aardbeving. En die groot stad is in drie dele verdeel en die stere, stere van die nazies het geval en die groot stad Babylon is in gedachtenis gebring voor God om haar te gee die beker met die wijn van grimmigheid van sy toren. So daar gaan die dag kom, <laughs> met die wederkomst, dat hier die vleeslike kinders van, wat die heren in vleeslikheid wou dien, gaan optrek in God, en met hom wil oorlog voer, maar God gaan hulle verwoes, God gaan hulle uitdel. So dit is die rebellie en opstand van die vleeslike kind van die heren. Hulle gaan tot in opstand met God wil kom, op die ouwe einde van die dag. En dit is so mooi, want te denk, dat God gaan hier die stad, hier die Babylon, gaan hy verwoes. Die geestelike stad, wat opgericht word, gaan hy verwoes. En dit is ook, om ons nou onder hierdie ding moet uitkom, so dat ons nie bou op die stad nie, so dat ons nie bou op hierdie wilde, en um, rijkdom, en al hierdie dinge, wat ons forceer, yes. om in hierdie eenheid te kom op aarde nie. Want dit, 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 dit forceer ook die kinders van die Heere, om in hierdie vleeslike eenheid te kom. Hmm. Nou, God gaan op een stadium, gaan hy die grimmigheid van hom oor hierdie Babylon uitstort. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, dit is het amazing om daar te denk, ons kan nou onder dit uitkom. Ons kan nou onder die vleeslike eenheid uitkom, onder die vleeslike godsdienst uitkom, so dat ons nie deel kan wees van die gevecht nie dat ons gered kan worden, dat ons ziel verlos kan worden, yes. nou al, reeds op aarde. Ja, yeah, en if you read the second beast in the Revelations 13, from verse 11, he talks about a false prophet, that a false prophet induces, he forces all the worldly desires in the church. That's what the first beast is about, the worldly desires, the, the, the um, blasphemings, the lustering, and also the uh, um, the, 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 the Babylon, the great city, the women harlot. It's all part and parcel of the first beast. And he says the fair, second beast, the false prophet, and the false prophet is about all false Christian religion. It forces all the worldly things within the church. And so the children of God can also be part of this rebellious carnal city which God will destroy at the end of the day, once and for all. Ja, so ons moet onder het uitkom. Yes. Ons moet onder die vleeslike eenheid wat ons probeer skep, moet ons uitkom. Ons moet verstaan, as weergebore kinders van die Heere, moet ons geestelik deurbreek, en eenheid yes. met God kom, met sy woord, en dan weet ons, dat ons een is met mekaar, en so kan ons een van gedachte, een van sin, een van mening raak, en die woord yes, van die Heere in die kracht en heerlijkheid uitra, so dat ander ook verlos kan word. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We are finished. Do you still want to say something? No, I think I'm finished. Happy. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for Heet your time. Heet die iets beteken? Is die los en vry vandag? Praise yes. die Heere. Dit is so mooi, want ek denk, ek denk dan net, um, dat, dat um, die vreeslike kinders van die Heere wil optrek met die oorlog, met die yes. gevecht, met die rebellie. Yes, because that's why in this Christian world you get the spiritual warfare. Yes. If you as a child of God is, are yes. busy with spiritual warfare, stop it. It is rebellion. Nowhere in the word of God we are instructed to do spiritual war against the devil or whatever the case might be. If we, then you are this number of rebellious because through spiritual warfare yeah, yes, because through spiritual warfare we want to force our opinion and our way down on things. And it is, it is ons eie geestelike kracht, ons eie geest, hoe kan ek het sê? Siele kracht. Siele kracht wat ons wil inspan om die duivel te probeer oorwin. Jy gaan hom nie met die vleeslikheid oorwin kry nie. Jy moet deurbreek geestelik. And then we want to use the word of God as the devil is using the word of God to try and fight against God to build his tower yes. into heaven. Because we think our carnal religion will go into heaven and God will agree with it. God will never agree with it. Ja, so ons moet verstaan, ons kan nie in die duivel gaan vecht nie. Wat moet jy doen? Jy moet onderwerp aan God, 
dan sal die duivel van jou af wegvlug. Yeah. Want omdat die mens rebels is en opstandig is en die vreselike godsdienst kan ek vir jy sê is in een rebellie, is in een opstand, is in een agressie tegen die waarheid. Hy is altyd in een oorlog tegen die waarheid. Hy wil nie die waarheid aanneem en hoor nie. En dit is wat gebeur. So ons moet daar onder uitkom, so dat ons kan onderwerp aan God, want onderwerping is vernedering. Dis nie om jou eie naam te bou en jou te staan en skree en die duivel te, 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 te probeer vecht nie. And, and anything that we use in the outward to establish a name and to track attention, we are, a, we are in a very dangerous place. To set up our own name, our own image, our own signature, the outward, there is, on your outward you can see there is something inward, there is something yeah. wrong. But now it says here in Galatians 4.29, I just want to read the scripture, but as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. There are fleshly children of God born from the woman is, uh, um, uh, Jezebel, and they are all part of the carnal um, church. They are all part of the uh, um, harlot woman Babylon, and they, they will persecute the spiritual. Yeah. But you as a spiritual, you must behave in a manner, and we must not fight back. Yeah. So don't go over in spiritual war. Just withdraw and say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to submit under thee. If I submit under thee, then I can resist the devil. The Bible says, don't submit under me and fight the devil. Resist. In other words, leave it. Yes, and the devil will from you off. Echtelijk. Yes. That is just super cool. And I say, so my God, it's 4, 29. Mars is this size. He who was born in the flesh, he who was born in the flesh, vervolg het, nou is dit ook. So die vreeslike kind van die Heere, gaan al eeuwig die geestelike kind van die Heere vervolg. Dan gaan altyd oorlog wees. Dan gaan altyd een verdeeldheid wees. Dan gaan altyd een probleem wees. Maar nie terugvecht nie. Onderwerp aan God, onderwerp aan sy woord en dien die Heere. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. May you have a blessed day. And if the Lord willing, Wednesday evening, 6.30, we see one each one again. Otherwise, we talk over WhatsApp and phone calls the whole week. <laughs> yes, you can please phone us, you can please WhatsApp us, you can enig iets met ons praat, gesels, vraag, vraag, ons is daar om te antwoord, loof die heren. Bye bye.